Good Friday morning, everybody. John and Lance along with Dell and Tiger Woods out there this morning. Dell, I've never seen Dell this excited about anything, if you want to know the truth. He has been all morning long. Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. That's all he's talked about. That's all. That's it. That's the only. It's like, holy crap, Dell, give it up. All right. It has been. He's a Jeff Neiman guy. He. <laughs> John's been screaming uh-oh. Tiger since is it Jeff I Neiman? entered Who's the Neiman? building. Joaquin? Oh, same thing, Jeff. Wa- well, Whatever. Jeff is the English version of Joaquin. John, no, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, John's been screaming tiger since I entered the building. The only, I would only care if there was actually a real tiger out there on the course and seeing how people <laughs> would adapt. I don't care about that old man getting trying to survive out there. He, he just, That's what it is. 23 rounds today because he only finished 13 holes. So he is trying to survive. So he, he really there's is. there's a bogey. Here's the deal, too. It couldn't be worse for him because he had the late start yesterday. He only played 13 holes because of the delay in the morning. Now he's got to come back and finish five holes today, and then he, he's got to turn around and start right away for his second round. So it couldn't be worse for a guy with a bad back. Yeah. It couldn't. So, oh, and, bad back, bad knee. Everything. Bad everything. Bad everything. Yeah, he didn't make the cut. Today is a disaster. Well, for he Tiger. started. He's, he's going to start under. up. This is going to be a bogey. This looks like a bogey. Yeah, fourteen. He's going to come out of the gate with a bogey on fourteen. So, uh, man, we'll just keep you up. I know all of you. I, I love golf, and we are going to keep you updated. And good news too. Brittany Lincecum, two-time champion of this tournament. Well, it's not, it wasn't the, sh- the Masters. The no, well, no, of women's. Champion. Oh, we were just talking about the, Masters. Uh, Chevron. I was going to say the she's Chevron not allowed to win. Week, the, by the way, she's not allowed to win the Masters. No, she's not allowed to. She, they, she was barely allowed to be on the grounds until recently. So, um, uh, she's going to join us in just a few minutes here, about fifteen minutes here on ESPN ninety-seven five. And I know all of you are ex- very excited about a lot of golf talk this morning. It's day. Well, it's still day one of the Masters. And it just doesn't get any bigger than this. Dell has been so excited for the last two days. I have not. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know why we were out at East River you... Nine yesterday. I was oh. like, "Oh, is there a major golf tournament? Why are we out there? Why? Why are we here? To... Oh, the Masters is starting. You watched three hours of it yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I got. I well, I opened up. Um, it's on uh, the Hulu app, and so I opened it up and watched. Well, I watched Tiger's round. Tiger uh, and Max Homa and uh, Jason Day. And uh, I was really just watching the, to see if they the, showed Jason Day's wife. What is wife. Jason Day wearing? I don't know. That looks creepy. That is really. I really, the only reason I watched is just I was hoping they, that they would show some Jason Day wife cam. But they didn't have that. I noticed they don't show the wives unless or girlfriends, the wags, unless you win. Right. They don't do like the NFL or basketball or sometimes baseball with Kate Upton where, you know, just in the middle of the round, you just, yeah. let's just get a shot of. Let's get a shot of Kate Upton as Justin is on hole number seven. That's not the way it works. No, not in golf, not nearly. As, no, if, if he's coming up 18 and she's standing there, they'll get a shot of her. Now, the run to – it's always wife and little kid runs to yeah, daddy if no. they win. If or they in Tony Finau's case, like and there's a, a, weird a gaggle of kids. Missed high five or kind of an awkward high five between caddy and, and yeah, golf. The yeah, yeah, of that. yeah. Or so, the hug. They hug, Lance. <laughs> So, yeah, it's so a lot of hugs. So why did you give up on the Astros game when it was so it was uh, so enthralling, and go to golf? Yesterday? I just a serious question. I brought it up last year, and now it really it's probably going to have to be addressed in season. It may be time for pitching coach to go. I mean, Hunter Brown. If if these guys have flashed who they were, we've seen who Hunter Brown can be. We've seen who Christian Javier can be. Right now, this is a pathetic. With Hunter Brown's last two performances, absolutely pathetic. pathetic. You are Can't pathetic. get out of, what? what is it, 15 earned runs in an inning and a third? I mean, what are we doing here? This is really, truly horrific. And either he is tipping his pitches, but I don't care what it is. This is a pitching coach's job to get this fixed. Because yep. what we're seeing now, Abreu, bad right now. Too many bad pitchers. And I saw somebody make the excuse about, well, they're pitching their 8th, ninth, and 10th best pitchers. Hunter Brown is not 8, 9, 10. Hunter Brown is supposed to be the next Justin Verlander. Yeah. And right now, he just looks like a DFA guy. Well, he's not, though. He's not the next. He, he, listen, he had a really, really nice month. But but Hunter Brown, was he, he had his first month of his major league career. He was great. Made the postseason roster. Helped you. Helped you win a title. His next year was bad. This year is is is... is 
abominable. He is pathetic right now. How, but how about the young pitchers, Araghetti and Henley and Hunter Brown? This is allegedly the future of this no, organization. No, this is what I'm, I was going to ask you. How bad does this scare you now? You know, I know... I know no one wants to hear my trade Kyle Tucker talk, and it's really it was really yesterday based on I've said it for a couple of years now. It's based upon the idea that your minor league system really isn't considered that great, and you're going to have to replenish, or you're just basically going to be relying on them once your core leaves, unless you're willing to spend, you know, pay top dollars on the free agent market for some of the top players, which Jim Crane up to this point does not show a willingness to. Uh, I think does not show a willingness to 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 build a team like that. And it's not frankly, it's not good business to build a team through free agency. Look at the Angels. The Angels tried that with and and the Padres have well, I mean the Padres tried it real quickly with Juan Soto, not in free agency, but they ended up dealing him. It didn't work out. Albert Pujols famously was a disaster of a contract. But I just Hunter Brown, we've kind of just we had resigned ourselves, pretty much every Astros fan, to, okay. This yeah. is the future. Yep. He's got a chance to be a one or a two, yep. or yep. worst case scenario, a closer. These are com these are comments that we had on a regular basis, and now what happens if he just sucks? And I don't think he sucks. Like that's why I think there's something. Either he is what about like, this him is, doesn't suck, but right this now. is this is he's 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 missing in the middle of the zone. But is there pitch tipping going on? I mean, well, that's what the thought was after when the first start. Well, if, it, 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 but he got lit up again. I mean, in two two thirds of an inning. I mean, what do you mean if, if, well, if what they, they didn't figure that out? No, that's what I meant. Well, that's a pitching coach's job. They've got to find if he's tipping his pitches. If not, it's still your job to get it fixed. Yeah, it's still your job to work with him. And ultimately, it turns out, you know, and if the pitching coach can't fix it, it's player, it's execution, and then it goes to talent is the last thing. So this is really really concerning when you're three with three of your future, you know, three of your best pitchers young pitchers supposed to be best young pitchers get whipped like this hunter brown is more concerning than eric getty i mean eric getty's just had one start right two good innings one terrible one hunter brown you're right we acted like hunter brown just has had a long steady stream of good pitching and just met you know met some misfortune last year and then this year hunter brown has not been the same guy that we saw who stepped on the scene as a rookie and he wasn't even a rookie, right? He didn't pitch enough to be considered a rookie, I don't think. His uh, first year, did he? He was a rookie last year. Yeah, he, last yeah. year was his rookie year. Yeah. The year before that was the year he came in, and we're like, this is the next Justin Verlander. Well, we don't say that Joey Molinari is the next Nick Saban just because he can do a good imitation. That's called an imitation. Yeah. Now I realize Hunter Brown's just good at imitating Justin Verlander's. That's like batting. He's batting stance guy. He's like Kobe and Michael. Yeah, he's no. Oh, that's Kobe a little is, disrespectful. Kobe's a Hall of no, Famer. He's no. batting stance guy. Only he's pitching that good. He's pitching release Pretty guy. Good. He's just wind up guy. Yeah. He just can. Do, have we asked him? Because there's a chance he might be able to do like the. He might be able to do Shane Bieber's. You know, can he do? Do you also do a, a Shane Bieber? Do you have a John Smoltz that you've worked on? Are you doing a? You know, or do you do a, a Blake Snell? Can you, th you, you do a right-handed like Blake Snell? Guy that That's what everybody's... I want to know if he's batting stance guy. Yeah, yeah. Because we just assume he's Justin Verlander, but I never make the assumption that the next great coach is going to be Joey Molinari because he does a Nick Saban. I never make that assumption. <laughs> I just say, well, ah, it's a really good imitation. Or Annie Agar. She does a great imitation of all of the NFL coaches. She's and terrible. Don't even. <laughs> I know she is. Don't bring I her. I can't. Well, I was, That's a I random. Watched, and I was like. There's only. It's got to be less than 1% of the people listening know what you're talking no, about. No, she's actually pretty popular. You not, know who Annie Agar is? I'm aware. Yeah. But Dell will be. But she's you got to be on Twitter though. and you got to have us. I don't really follow her. Um, I, I'm out on that bit. I don't want any part of it's, having her come across my timeline. It's not clever. It's, it's not clever. It's old. But. You know she's still hot, so that's a that's okay. Wow. You follow her? Uh, yeah, and I can't ever. <laughs> I can't, and it, but I I was and then I was like, oh, I, I must ask you, I want you to be serious. Over and over you would never lie on the day of the Masters. Would you follow her if she wasn't hot? What, what kind of obvious answer are you looking I'm making for? Making him say it out loud with his human mouth. I, we gotta go. I well, don't know. I I'd have to. Will you follow her for her comedy? I actually, at first, I was like, uh, and then I'm, uh. Did you say, uh, because she's good looking? She's, she's an attractive if young she lady. Didn't, if you didn't find her attractive 
but thought she was somewhat entertaining at yes, first. I would, would you have followed her? I'm gonna start yes, a new, I would. Okay. I'm going to start a new... If I, I thought she was entertaining and not attractive, yes. Oh, yeah, but okay, let me ask you this. But now she's... Do she's you just follow? Attractive. Do you She's follow? Not entertaining at all. Do you follow Paige Spiranak? Uh, no. Th- is that an upset? For, I, that's a bit of an upset yeah. for me. Uh, mostly because I don't know how active he is on Instagram. She's always the Paige, on my timeline. Yeah, now. she's going to be more of an yeah, IG than the, she is. The a, Paige Spiranak experience is best suited for Instagram. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, that's I don't true. follow her on either. Okay, but she's always on my Wait, timeline. Do you have a for gram? whatever reason? She's on my timeline. Do you have a Finsta? A what? No, he set up an Instagram, but I don't yeah, think I've he uses it. Yeah. That's a Finsta. No, it's a real. His Tell name him what is Finstas a, are. It's a, something you use to maybe you, a part of your personality you don't actually want people to know about. Lurk. You just lurk. Or you lurk and you and you follow and I stalk people. I, yeah, I know. I know. He doesn't yeah, have one. I don't yet. care about that. You're not on Instagram? I'm, I'm not. I rarely ever get on it. Ever. But it's the same kind of stuff that you, your crazy stuff that you look yeah, at on I know, Twitter. Yeah, I like that. But Instagram's got that too with reels. So, so Twitter sends He'd you. He'd love TikTok. Sw- no, I'm not on TikTok. At, Twitter sends you to Instagram a lot. There's yeah. a lot of Insta. So then I'll look through some Instagram stuff, but I don't, I'm, I'm not, on, I'm rarely ever on it. But um, here's the deal. Okay. When we come back, Reggie Jackson had an explanation. Well, an we have a guest, me. don't we? Pardon me? Don't we have when a we guest? Come back, right. we, we got, got Brittany Linsicum. That's right. And then after that, stay with us. I know you guys all love golf, and especially women's golf, which is coming up next week with the Chevron Championship. After that, after that, we're going to talk about Reggie Jackson and what he had to say. But right now, I'm talking about Dream Rate. My man, Kent. This dude, I'm telling you, I've never seen anybody that gets as geeked out. He loves mortgages. He loves to he loves to save people money. He loves to find ways to, you know, cut back on whatever expenditures that you're going to have on your mortgage. Uh, the big guys that put their name on bowl games, they they're not they're not they're not doing it like he is. I'm just telling you, they're not getting you, giving you the kind of attention that he can because he has a limited number of people that he will take on at one time. They've got hundreds if not thousands at a time they're national he's local he loves by the way he listens to the show he loves the show he loves our listeners you got to go if you're going to get a mortgage you want to find out about a mortgage you want to ask him anything about a mortgage how much you were your payments would be whatever it is that you want to ask him he's the ultimate mortgage hookup he's local he doesn't have the expenses that the other guys have he can save you money all you need, broker, and he's, by the way, he's a broker, and brokers are just better. People do it wrong. I did it wrong. I wish I'd have known Kent when I was buying this house. I didn't. I wish I did. 713-520-5626, 713-520-LOAN, or go to 975loans.com. Tell Kent you heard it right here.
You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Next Wednesday, we're going to be out at the Chevron Championship, and uh, just the best women in the world are going to be playing here, and it's going to be fun. We were there last year, had a lot, of, a great time, and it was their first time to be playing here in the Chevron Championship. Uh Eight-time winner, two-time major winner, and six Solheim Cups. Brittany Lincecum is joining us here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Brittany, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we appreciate it. So, I got a question for you, Brittany. All right. You're in the big blind, okay? You got a, a pretty good stack. Three people limp in now, okay? And you got a pair of fours. Are you raising them, or you just want to see the flop? Ooh, I don't know. I, I tend to try to bully people out, but, you know, sometimes that backfires. So I'd probably raise and make them think that I had something way better than what I had. <laughs> yeah, see, I like that. Brittany's one of her hobbies is playing uh, Texas Hold'em. Obviously, because that's not usually the first question asked of a, a golf, <laughs> golf champ. <laughs> You caught me by surprise. I, did, I, I thought I would, but I wanted Max to see. Max Homa's here with us. Max, you're sitting on Tin King in the putt, and you're sitting there at the big blind. <laughs> Well, it's not usually the question. I wanted to see how aggressive Brittany is. Are you as aggressive at at Texas Hold'em as you are on the golf course? And you know what? I actually think, Brittany, since we'll get to golf in a second, but let's talk cards. Um, I actually think how you play blackjack and how you play poker says a lot about is a real test. You can find out who people are. It's a litmus test. And she just told you she would bully. Yep. She She would try to bully. She would raise. She would try to represent something. My guess is you're not laying up a whole lot on par fives either in front of water. No, sir. I've won my two majors by being aggressive and going for the green and two, and, and it worked out there twice, so I, I love being aggressive. How about this? Her first major, she eagled the par five uh, 18th hole to win the tournament. What? <laughs> That's pretty aggressive. Is that, <laughs> is that the greatest your greatest moment in golf? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that hole is just super hard, and <clears throat> it's an island green. So if you go long, short, left, right, like there's a lot of trouble. But par fives have always been my strong suit, and I love being aggressive on the par fives. And it was a club that I really liked, so it set up perfectly, and I just executed the shot perfectly. So it worked out great. <laughs> Man, that is some – she had some some guts doing that, right? I mean, going for it on an island green – and then making the putt to win on the 72nd hole. That's awesome. What did you think about uh, the Nicholas course, Carlton Woods, last year? I thought it was great. You know, obviously, a lot of people had their doubts. You know, we had been in Palm Springs for so many years. So, to move the event to Houston, you know, we were kind of worried, you know, how Chevron was going to kind of take it over. But, honestly, it's been first class the whole way. The golf course was spectacular. It was, it's a great golf course. It's hard. It's long. Um, there's a lot of challenges, so it's a great golf course, and the Chevron folks have really stepped up and uh, you know are really taking care of us girls. So it's really cool to see to see the game growing and you know different traditions moving forward, and it's just really cool. Yeah, five year deal here. Now they changed up the course. Are you are you here yet or no? Yeah, uh, no, coming tomorrow. You're coming tomorrow. Okay, so yeah, it is going to it's a it's a little bit different, especially number eight. But they did make it a little bit, I think, a little bit more challenging. Uh, for you and they they and they did redid the greens as well so they put a lot of work into this thing and I know it's playing part it's just gorgeous right it's just perfect here right now so you guys you 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 got it took advantage of some some nice weather last year and I think we're gonna have another nice week this week um and 18 is a lot like that that the the, the hole you won on in that mm-hmm. a lot of risk reward there too no it is absolutely you know it's it's a fun hole it's um, a little less scary but a longer club in so um, I guess it kind of equals itself back out, but it's it's a great finishing hole, and you know anything can happen on 18, which I absolutely love. I love you know some girls will be able to go for it, some are going to have to make birdie the old-fashioned way and lay up, but um, you know it's anybody's game coming into that last hole. Brittany Lindsay come with us, eight-time winner on the LPGA Tour, two-time major winner, and this the first one. I mean, it's the same. It, you won the ANA, you won the Nabisco, but this is the same one with the Chevron name on it. The, it, we got our first major going on in, on the uh, PGA Tour as well. Do you guys keep an eye on on the Masters? Oh, absolutely. I, I, my picks are not doing too well. 
as of yesterday, but maybe today they'll turn it around. <laughs> You've been out there for a little while on the LPGA Tour since uh, 07 or so, right? Is that Was that your debut, 07? Um, 2005, yep. Uh, mm-hmm. 2005. How much has it changed, and what's what's better about the tour right now? Oh, gosh. It's definitely going in the right direction, and I love seeing it growing. And, you know, when I first started, we had way less tournaments. We were playing for way less money, and now – especially our majors are really stepping up and supporting women's golf, which is great to see. And um, obviously we still need some of the, the smaller ones to kind of step it up. But I mean, just all in all 20 years out there and have seen, you know, different commissioners and different strategies and, and just growing the game with more, you know, TV time and media coverage and um, everything is going in the right direction. It's a great time for the LPGA. There's so many great players. Obviously Nelly Corda is absolutely crushing it right now. Um, which is great for American golf. So it's just it's just a good time to be a part of the LPGA. Yeah, it just seemed like just a couple of years ago there was the, the LPGA was in a little bit of danger, and now it seems like you guys are flourishing more. Oh, yeah. And, I, again, I think, you know, Nelly, an American player, a lot of people want to see American players doing well, and, um, you know, she's doing that for us right now. She's kind of becoming our tiger, which is what we, we need somebody to dominate and kind of be the face, and uh, she's definitely taking that role on, which is awesome. Whitner, women are getting hot right now. What, with Caitlin Clark, you know, all, that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You guys are on a roll. Well, new, <clears throat> there's new leagues. I just saw a new rugby league is popping up. Oh, wow. uh, WNBA sales or yeah, I, it is women, women are, having, are hot. As they'd say, as BuzzFeed might say, women are having a moment right yeah, now. Yeah, right. In sports, <laughs> for sure. Congratulations. Yeah, Congratulations. and it's yeah. and it's well earned. Yeah. And I love that because last week we were in Vegas, so I watched, you know, Caitlin Clark out there and just watching all these men cheer for women's basketball was something I haven't really experienced. I don't watch too much basketball, but my caddy was invested and loves basketball, so we watched it and it was just cool to see how many viewers and how many people were cheering for all of them. And it was just, it's just a cool time to be in women's sports. Absolutely. So did you bet on her? Because <laughs> I didn't, cause I wasn't too sure. You know, I don't, again, don't, I so bad. I don't really watch basketball, so I wasn't sure, but um, it's just cool. To, then I started Googling her and seeing, you know, stuff on social media and just seeing what she has accomplished. And it's, it's pretty amazing. Well, see, that tells you a little something about Brittany too. We bet on a lot of stuff we don't know anything about, right? <laughs> A, yeah, a yeah lot exactly of no that, we do that all i the just want to have action yeah that's all <laughs> that's, but you were you would have been right if you took south carolina in that one but but uh she was just amazing now listen i, I hope everybody y- y'all get out there because they can just flat out play uh, i was amazed last year i haven't seen much in person women's golf but i was out, out there i was just one of the starters last year Brittany. y'all yeah. can hit it i'm telling you <laughs> Uh, are you Thank one of the you. longer ones out there still or no? Um, I'm pretty good. I'm, I used to be the longest, which was kind of cool to, to hold that title for a few years. But two kids later, 38, I'm, I'm getting a little old. But um, I can still hit it out there. So I, I hit it far enough to compete, and that's that's all you need. Yeah. How much uh, – I don't I don't want to – I'm not tr- putting a limit on you, but how much longer you think you're going to be out there? That is a – that's like the million-dollar question, I feel like. <laughs> Not sure. I mean, obviously, traveling with two kids is not easy. You know, we're obviously loading everybody up tomorrow, coming on out, and um, each flight that I go on with my one-year-old, it's like disaster. <laughs> something happens, you know. So it's it's definitely taking its toll. But I mean, I just love the game so much that I'm going to push it as long as possible. We have great daycare on tour. My mom and dad travel with me every week when I bring the girls out. So um, everybody makes it super helpful and is super, you know, helpful with me wanting to do my job and still playing on the LPGA. So. Um, I'm definitely going to push it as long as I possibly can just because I love the game so much. That's got to be great. We hear all these ball, ball players. Uh, we just saw Holiday come up, uh, and he was in the locker room with his dad. Uh, his dad, Matt Holiday, played. Jackson Holiday just came up for the Orioles. <laughs> it must be good for your girls to be seeing the women out there, you know, competing and the competition at the highest level. Oh, absolutely. That's that's definitely my number one goal is just to get them out there and show them this wonderful game because golf is just a great game whether they play high school college or just you're in life you know so many people entertain clients on the golf course there's no reason why women can't get in on that so i just want them to be able to play you know recreationally maybe with their dad and i um it's just a wonderful game teaches a lot of great lessons and um it's cool that it's a kind of a family thing yeah you girl dads out there bring your daughter out there to see see them play next yeah. week at uh, the Car- uh, Carlton Woods, the Nicholas Course, just beautiful too. By the way, it's a great, great atmosphere. All right, before you go, one of your other hobbies. What's the biggest fish you've ever caught? 
Probably one of my Goliath groupers, but I can't take it out of the water to actually weigh it. I don't even know if I, I don't even know how you would because it's so big. But um, I was told it was around 300 pounds. But um, I, I want to catch Moby Dick, and my husband wants to catch dinner, so we're kind of a little bit torn when we go fishing. <laughs> You're a competitor. What? That's what 300 pounds? We, like, as if we didn't know. Everything is competitive here. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has a competitive tilt to it. Yes. Wait a minute, 300, how'd you reel in 300? I think it took like two hours because I had the wrong pull with the wrong line and I don't even know how, I just was determined to kind of take my time and not, you know, tighten the reel or do anything crazy and just kind of wore the fish out, I think. <laughs> we are going to be rooting for you next week, Brittany. Congratulations. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it and good luck yes. uh, at the Chevron next week. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. We look forward to seeing you next week. Yep. I'll be out there. We'll be out there. Okay. We'll be out there Wednesday for sure. And then uh, I think I'll be out there uh, as well on the weekend. So good stuff. Good, great stuff. I uh, pre- appreciate you. Brit- Brittany Lincecum, Texas Hold'em player, Fisher woman. Okay. Women are hot right now. Okay. They're on fire. Women are doing are, are doing some things, right? Doing good things right now <laughs> out there in the sports world. I don't know. Dell is not an ally. Okay. How am I, why am I not an ally? You're just not an ally. You I don't, don't care. I do care. Okay. What do you mean I don't care? It's it's great for the for the sporting world to have uh, the Chevron here next week. Okay. I'm. It's great for the city and it's great for the sports world. It's just not my bag. Well, I don't care about the Masters. So it's just not my bag. Let's okay. have a bag. No, he can't. Get, get why out. are you bag watching? Get in the bag. Get I mean, in the I, golf I, bag. I know though. it's Masters time and that gets you excited. It's, get get in the it's, golf. It's bag. just not my thing. <laughs> That's it, beautiful. It just isn't my thing, John. That's By the beautiful. way, did you hear? Uh, did you get to hear any of of Chris Vernon's no, Masters let's update? No, let's do it. Yeah, we got it. Some of it is edited together, so it, like it'll kind of skip. But he's in the middle of yeah. Tiger hasn't teed off yet. Oh, okay. And when when he does it, when he does his update, because of what time he's on, but it's it's pretty good. That's good. Yeah, it's pretty we good. Are, I mean, some of it is visual too. He's got his green jacket on, his putter. He's got all kinds sunglasses. Of animals. He's got a, He's got the stuffed animals, the the people, people dressed yeah. as dancing behind him. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's the whole night. Yeah, um, we'll do that a little bit later in the show. But when we come back, we'll hear from Reggie Jackson on why the Astros don't have Blake Snell. We'll do that. <laughs> no, why are we that's Tiger? That's, that's not the, Tiger. He does that for Tiger. No, it's the remix. That's the remix. The re- <laughs> hey, I'm a, hey, local leaders in the PVF supply industry. I know them. TPC Industrial. Those are my guys, Houston Glover and Archie Lopez. If you're in this business, the PVF business, you need pipes or valves or fittings and flanges. If you've got big jobs that you're on and you can't suddenly find these things, forged steel couplings, hoses, you need all this stuff. Well, they've got it, and they'll deliver it to you. And they've got, they're right here, Mont Bellevue, okay, get right on I-10. It doesn't matter what state you're in. You could be listening to this on the app in some other state, and you need this stuff, and they'll get it to you. And you're, you're probably sitting there like, yes, I need, this is exactly what I need, John. Well, if this is what you need, you need supplies on time. Trust TPC with the PVF needs. 346-226-3866. You can go online at TPC tpcindl.com that's tpcindl and tpc industrial tpcindl.com these guys are great you'll love them you'll love doing business with them and they'll take care of business they'll get it to you on time it's happening every day tpcindl.com
You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. All right, 733 ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. John, Lance, and Dell. So Reggie Jackson, when asked... Who was it that uh, asked the? Uh, do you know who's who's who was it, though? Who asked the question so we can give him some credit? We never do that. Anyway. Well, so all of a sudden now we're doing that. We want to have we some give professional standards ask now. Questions? Yeah, I mean, why do was you it wanna... John Hyman? It was from. Well, it's, I think it's Heyman, not Hyman. Um, but I think it's from his Twitter. I'll pull up who asked the question. Uh, hmm. but as you said, Reggie probably said some things people aren't going to be happy with. Um, he gave he t- he included a lot of people. A couple of people you don't want, at least according to Lance, you don't want involved in decisions for the Astros. John Heyman, and he was the guy who asked the question. Yes. Right. Oh, now I now you want me to play it? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was looking for the name, and now I have to pull up the sound. Sorry. So give me oh a second. Gosh. Well, you're the one that introduced it. No, you introduced it. Okay. Okay. Here is Reggie Jackson with John. Heyman, Hyman, whatever. Heyman, John Heyman. John Heyman. John Heyman. Uh-huh. Um, here, uh, was it There was this, Was it yesterday? See the date on it. <laughs> yes, it was. I'm trying. <laughs> stupid computer. <laughs> yes, it was yesterday. Um, he sat down part of, uh, I guess, his John Heyman's podcast. And Reggie Jans- Jackson had some answers to a couple questions regarding Blake Snell and maybe Alex Bregman, Bregman going forward. management and coaching staff uh, on the field, um, talks to our GM and his staff. And then, of course, some of the analytics come into the future of a player and our decisions are made that way, along with being fiscally responsible. Um, uh, our, our being fiscally responsible, I think, is what kicked us out of the Snell deal. Um, he signed a two-year deal, I want to say, for 62 Um I'm, that's too much um, um, for him. He's been hurt a a couple of times. Um, And and I think there's incentives on top of that. He's also got an option on his own. And between the four or five people that make the decisions with the Astros, we don't play that game. Jesus. First thing I take away is if you thought, I know you argued, man, well, what about when these guys are gone? Jim's going to spend. Jim ain't spending if he thinks it's dumb money. He's just not. He's not going to spend dumb money, which means he'll be out on the top players. Because, unfortunately, top free agents require top dollars. That's just the way it works. And so if he thinks it's dumb money, then, I mean, we're talking about a two-year deal for for a guy who just won a Cy Young Award, and he wouldn't do a two-year deal at 31 apiece. Well, they are already at. <clears throat> at, at max and as far as they're already over one threshold i mean i don't know I, do, you, do you are you just don't care about the draft picks you don't care and, and listen once you get over the next threshold you gotta you gotta double the payment i do I mean, care about pretty the, much i do care about draft picks that's why yeah. i want that's why i want uh, and i care about Rebuilding. That's why I'm open to. That's why well, if Jim you Crane hit that other threshold, you're not getting any compensation. You lose. All well, the, that's yeah. why some of your players should be available for trade this year. Unfortunately, because the way this season is looking right now, unless everybody comes back he- fully healthy who's injured and they pitch at a really high level, um, you're going to have some. You're, you're going to be facing some problems, and this includes Abreu has not gotten it together. We got to see Hader pitch like he's capable of pitching. Ryan Presley. I mean, that big three was supposed to be Lidge, Dotel, and Billy Wagner. And it's it we're early. I well, get it's, it. It's but far but, short of that. But it's far short of that early or so far early yeah. in the season. We're about ten. And it's too early about, to give up. By the way, we're about start 10, trading away everybody away. We're about ten percent. Yeah, yeah. I I'm talking about as the right. season progresses, if this looks like a, a two thousand season where it's like this is just a lost season. I think Jim Crane is going to have to pivot because he just Reggie Jackson just told you he's not going to do anything that he thinks is fiscally irresponsible because they don't play that. 
Reggie just told you, we don't play that. If they think a deal, and we know that from what he offered Carlos Correa, the proof is in the pudding. Jim Crane is not going to offer top dollars. He's not going to offer market value to a player, uh, who's not, especially who's not his and maybe to even guys who are there. But the big one that you wanted to stir the pot with with me is that he said, you know, there's five decision makers. Bagwell, Biggio, Reggie Jackson, Dana Brown, and Jim Crane. There should be two decision makers, Jim Crane and Dana Brown. And the fact that this is going on, two of the all-time great Astros, Hall of Famers, love them both, great players, grew up with both of them, Bagwell and Biggio, don't care about Reggie Jackson from a historic, you know, I do from a historical standpoint. I don't from my childhood and, and adolescence and high school and all that, but and, and in, into, you know, adulthood. But these guys should not be making any decisions. They're, they didn't come up like... If they were great, you don't have to have spent your whole life in baseball, in a managerial, you know, in a front office to be able to recognize talent and all that. But the Jeff, the Jeff Bagwell, the two moves of Brave that he was highly involved in, that we know of, at least two of them that we know of, which is which is Montero, dumb contract at the time we said that, and then a Brave, older player, it's just, I mean, how does Jim Crane, who's so smart? How's Jim? Honestly, how's Jim Crane, who's so smart, who who understands the the economics and the they got away from analytics? Reggie's like, oh, sometime we'll, we may consider some analytics. Like this team was built into a dynasty that we haven't that, that Major League Baseball hadn't seen for a long time, and he's get. I just don't understand getting away from the good people and the smart people and the way it was done, because you want to go, you want to. You want to regress to literally the opposite of Moneyball. You're literally having old players come in and like, what do you think there? What do you think, Jeff? What do you, what do you think the contract should be? This is literally the opposite of Moneyball and smart, intelligent baseball. It's asking old baseball players what their thoughts are on contracts and players. It's like, dude, there's a reason that GMs in the NFL – don't love for some – a lot of coaches don't know what they're doing in evaluations. I've I've encountered this when I talk to coaches about players. There's an offensive line coach for a team that I won't mention, and he's terrible. Like, he's just terrible at some of the evaluations. And his team flopped because they drafted a guy like nine years ago in the second round who sucked, and I knew he sucked. And he was a big reason that guy got picked, and it happened two other times. And I'm just like, you know, a lot of coaches can't – a lot of players can't coach – a lot of coaches can't evaluate. Why are they having these guys in such an important role and having so much juice? It'd be one thing if Jim Crane was like, yeah, no, I, I want to know what you guys think. And then behind the scenes, so Dana, I just think it's great to have, I just want to have him as part of the organization. It's great to have him behind home plate. You know, I value, you know, value having them. I just wish they didn't actually have that real time juice with them because Reggie thinks they got a lot of juice. I got this text. Duck John Lance is about to throw a shoe. You think, Dell, at any I point? Have, I haven't gotten close to shoe throwing yet, but it is. It is starting. It doesn't make sense that this is a smart it's owner. Bubbling. It's bubbling. Volcano is, I can. Yeah, it's, it's starting it's to bubble. There. If you ask the public who's Adele, a better owner. You have that volcano thing. You ready, ready for this? I can find you ready one. for this to show you where it is right now? When he said busy, when Reggie Jackson I, says his busy face and, and his busy hands. <laughs> I think we got another one in? Okay, let me ask you this. Remember when Jeff Bagwell was a hitting coach for about two months yeah. for the Astros, and then he's like, "Ah, never mind," and like, and they keep trying to jackhammer Jeff Bagwell into the organization for years. Let me ask you this: mm -hmm. uh, right now, who is the public like more, Jim Crane or Cal McNair? Right now, yeah. Oh, no, I think it's, it's still power. Power. okay. Oh, that's what I'm power. asking. I don't know. I think. It's I mean, it feels. The earth it would is feel shifting. insane. Yeah, it's shifting. It should never shift. I mean, the better owner is Jim Crane by yes, far. By far. By far. Jim Crane the greatest was a owner wartime owner who helped you turn the corner. He's the greatest owner the Astros have ever had, yeah. without question. The city's it, ever had. But it's also puzzling. It, he is. But it's also puzzling, puzzling that he got away from successful people in mass. I mean, can't keep Stromy because, from what I understand, I don't know if the money was too high or – 
I don't know. Brent Strom still wanted a coach, obviously. Brent he started, Strom got his team to the World Series last year. I don't. I just don't understand yeah, what why we diamond, get away from good people. Yeah, but what are those Diamondback arms going to look like in three years when they're all falling off like the Astros oh, are now? Oh, see, you're blaming the butcher Strom again. The He's butcher. Not the butcher. <laughs> He's not. Brent the Butcher Stromy. <laughs> Do you want the same thing that you got from Alfred Shingoon people? I don't think it's the same. The Stromy people were going to come after you. Well, as long as the social team doesn't cut it up, I think I'll be okay. okay. Brent the Butcher what country Strom. is Stromy from? We don't even I know. I think he's an American. Okay. okay. Yeah. Are you sure? Do you want well, all of all, America all against America you? going to be after you? Look at me. They've been against me since I miss, birth. I miss I miss. Brent America's Strom. always against me. I, I miss Strom. Brent. Oh, yeah, you we, should. I, I think Strom. we all miss Brent Strom. I mean... The won pit- a title without him. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Just think. Just think the how law he's- firm won a title. I'm not sure you know that. Uh, Augie Strom is what we're calling him. Wayne Wayne Strom Graham. Golly, the this is a direct is message. Ugly. I want you to take this in now. <laughs> Crane is morphing into Jerry Jones. Ooh. Is what somebody just told me a direct message with the meddling. The difference is Jerry would spin stupid for for a long time. He did dumb stuff. He won't. Well, I mean, okay. There's been a couple of dumb things done with the Astros, but I don't I don't know that I would say he's Jerry is a win at all cost guy who is kind of a maniac who's now pulled back and they're actually pretty fiscally responsible to Cowboys. I mean the Cowboys actually operate like a more conservative team. But but getting involved a lot, yes. Well, that's that because does, they had to. They have how many money. Well, they're does, all they're yeah, all they have out. overspent. But oh, yeah. Jim Crane is but his his draft picks have been pretty good. Uh, he yeah. and, he and Steven. Um Jim Crane is much more active with the hands on decision and I just I don't know yeah. how good Dana Brown is. This it's, is a pretty good point by Dustin. It's not puzzling why Crane adjusted his strategy. His brand got smeared and it's still being smeared because of the last regime. Yeah, but then that's ego. That's no. ego no, getting it's in not. the way. It's it's immediately Luno was fired. Immediately, his brand he got smeared, and, and yet his brand thrived. His brand was only three years old at that time, four four years old. No, three years old at that time. Well, 17, I know, but 18, it was 19. a huge embarrassment for the organization. I, I, there's no question. But his brand has actually been built. Also, there was only three years there. His brand has actually been built on not so much twenty, but twenty one, twenty two, and twenty three. Yeah, and that's post Leno, but it's also it's also guys Leno brought in. I mean, I, I think that's ego. I think it's ego. I get why I get why he fired him. I don't have an issue with that. But I mean, Billy Martin came back to the Yankees a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, well, mm. a lot of times. So is Joe, he ain't George Steinbrenner. Is Joe Espada, Dave Campo, or Jason Garrett? Yeah, he's right now. If you right now, he's got some Campo vibes to him it, it, in terms of how it, they'll treat him. I don't think it's fair to see. games in. So. I'm and just, he's got crap to throw I'm just out comparing, there. Getty, I'm just Henley. comparing. With, yeah, no. Like, it's true. But. Like, Hinch was Jimmy Johnson. Dusty was Barry the Switzer. Questioned, but actually did win a Super Bowl. And then yeah. J- Joe Espada is Dave Campo? Because Campo <laughs> didn't last long. Oh, could you see Don't, Could you see a spot it? I'm just asking you this. I, we I know play. we're early. I know we're early, but could you see him getting the ax earlier than expected? No. Espada. You think he'll stick three years with the spot? Oh, I don't know about three years, but yeah, I think he's going to have this well, year. Two year stints, not long. And two, yeah, that I don't know. Could that's, he be fired after one year? I say yes, and that's not, that's Campo issue. It's 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 not uh, his fault. Campo got three years. You can't blame him for this. We I gotta got break say, it here. We gotta talk right now about Doc. We gotta talk about hair. You know, he doesn't have any. Maybe he could use Doc Linville. Go Espada. There's a lot of things he could use. He could use starting pitching and and Doc Linville. Okay, so here's the deal. I, do you need Doc Linville? Are you follically challenged? If you have a receding hairline, if you have a bald spot, if you are somebody that is, if you're too young, okay, to be out there being bald, okay, Doc Linville is here for you, but catch it in time. And oh, by the way, he can stimulate your own growth. This is what is happening every single day. He does. It's not just the neocrafting, the PRP as well which stimulates the growth of your own hair. Now, the neo-grafting moves the hair from the side to the top. It's awesome. The, the, the procedure is awesome. Yeah, I did, I've did. i done them both and love, love what the doc has done. You're looking for the best way to get hair. There's only one way to go. My man, Doc Linville. 
painless. He's got an anesthetic the last three days. It's perfect. 975hair.com. That's 975hair.com. You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. <laughs> you sound like that fan. <laughs> so I was at the hockey game the other night, and one guy was yelling at my cousin. He took Sabres. For those of you who don't know, my cousin is the Sabres head coach. And we went to the game and sitting right behind the bench. And the guy was like, Okay, Granado, you stink. Go do something. Go do something. And he, I was like, what exactly is the coach supposed to do? What's he supposed to do? Change those lines. Move a right winger around. Drop a center <laughs> down was, to the second he line. He was doing all those things. Oh, do it again. Do more. Do what? It, with the power play was over, and the B Buffalo didn't score. Nice job, Granado. You, you, you're terrible. Get it? like. Get a different. He didn't score a goal there. Put a guy in front of the net. He didn't. What? There was. Get guys. a couple more deflections. There were guys in front of the net. There were a lot of guys. Make sure your guys get shots on goal. Something. I don't know. Do it. It just seemed like he was doing everything he could. Mm, not enough. Apparently not. It wasn't It wasn't near enough. Uh, but I just was like, what exactly do you want him to do? And Lance just came in. Come on, Crane. Get off, get off your ass and let's do something. What do you like want what? Crane At to this, do? Well, he put, he's got five. Five starters that would be one, two, or three starters on every other team. He's got five guys on the IL. Five. Five starters. 
There's not much Crane can do. There's not much anybody could do. Yeah, his uh, his, when you're starting Blair Henley. Yeah, his job will be this in the off season. Um, I mean, we could have seen a, more than one major league arm added to the bullpen. I hate her as a big arm, but that bullpen we knew we should have known would be a problem. I think Martinez is okay. Um, Mashunsky. Well, and, you know, we'll, well find Taylor's, out. Taylor's Taylor Scott's Scott. pitching far more than he should. He's he, Taylor Scott. You're dependent on him way more than you do. But listen, when your start when your starters go in a week, a third of an inning, three innings, and two thirds of an inning, you got four or, four innings and twenty one earned runs out of three starters is in that, a week. Is that bad? Goodness gracious! What what is Joe Espada gonna do? Oh, I'm not blaming Dave Campo or, or Jim Crane or anybody when you're getting that kind of crap. I'm not blaming Campo for that. I mean, he's not. Stop calling him Campo. Uh, that's uh, if that's, we're calling we Jim call Crane, Tommy the Butcher. <laughs> he, if we're calling Jim Crane, Jerry Jones. I'm just making the comps. And Campo was was next in line after Switzer. So if Dusty is our Switzer, then Espada is our Campo. I mean, what are you ta- what are you talking about? Don't. Stop saying that. He's going to win, win big too, mm. and then you're going to regret that Campo crap. Nah, I won't remember it. <laughs> eight straight, eight, eight straight, straight ALCS, ALCS is you're predicting. Yep. Are we? How many pitchers are we going to have back? Is the entire rotation well, going to be healthy? Back. They're all coming back. And watch, watch the run they go on. Mm. Lance has already given up on the he's season. He's given up on the show. He's out the door. He uh, just yeah. He's just said okay. So, I gotta go. We've I got to make a call. We've I got to call. Yeah, apparently, call. Either that or snacks. Apparently, no one care. He doesn't care that there's an actual job to do, apparently. Apparently not. So, we've got the pitching issues, but we also have runners, the runners in scoring position issue. Is that going to change, too? Um, well, that'll never change. Oh, this. okay. Yeah. Then there's still a big I think, problem. I think we it's Victor Caratini time. If you oh. want. Yep. Victor Caratini. We don't need a backup catcher. Victor, get out there. Play first base. Go. I mean, this John Singleton thing, holy. They don't have a major league first baseman on the roster. We don't have a major league first baseman. Which That's is. so sad. You can't play. You can play a Brayu once every three days. That's all you. Oh, it's all so nah, sad. It's just his timing, John. He'll figure it out. Yeah. That's 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 the word from Dana Brown and Jose Abreu. He talked about it, I think, yesterday. Uh, Brown and Brayu both talking about. He's just. The timing's just off. He'll, once he figures that out, oh, he'll be, yeah, he's gonna he'll be fine. He's going to figure it out. Yeah, he's definitely going to figure it out. What about this uh, Randy McAvoy thing? Well, I question what's going on at a certain news outlet that they would let Randy McAvoy get the exclusive with the McNairs. What's was it on? an exclusive, really? Or did, any just... was, did anyone else get to sit down? Well, the, he was in their studio. So. Well, it could have been at someone else's studio if they would have secured that. <laughs> secured it? Secured that Hannah? And Cal, they they were sitting next to each other. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Um, so what did they say? Anything? Well, they talked about how excited the family was, and and the the people in the city were for when Diggs tra- when the Diggs trade was announced. And Cal says they're embracing expectations. I don't have to say it. Let's hear from the very eloquent Hannah and Cal McNair. Our boys, when they heard the Stefan Diggs news, were screaming around the house, and then their friends said their teacher stopped class to tell everyone. So. There's quite a buzz amongst the younger generation about the guys that we brought in, so that's that's exciting. But and we embrace the expectations. That's where we want to be. And at the same time, it's about building the team, and the team being coached and working hard. It's the day-to-day things that are going to get us where we want to get to. But we've got to stay focused, um, you know, and work hard every day to bring about where we want to go. And we want to win now. <laughs> Don't do that anymore. Why? It's not appropriate anymore? It's not appropriate. Because they're winning football Hannah's games? There. Oh, it's because Hannah's there. <laughs> I wish you'd stop doing that. By <laughs> well, way. you shouldn't have said it. You shouldn't have done it. I know the Texans are good, so you think all of your misdeeds no, can't be brought out I, listen, again? I don't know that anyone's rebranded as well as Cal. I don't know that we've ever seen a rebrand. And we're very, and we're very soft on this. Cal put, throws up the H, flips a couple burgers. That's and, all, and we're like, that's we're all good. we need him to do. <laughs> well, we're, because we're he's good. not an unlikable guy, though. See, that's the thing is because he doesn't really do a whole lot, he's never really been unlikable. But I, not from a personality standpoint. What what does he do that's unlikable? Is he mean to people? Is he Does he say mean things to people? Cal is a guy who seems like a nice enough guy. I've, I actually know somebody who's become friends with him and says he's a great guy 
really nice guy. Like, yeah, not you know, he's a good guy. Not not maybe well, not somebody you hang out with all the time. What do you mean? And is your best? Well, you just may not be best friends with them. Mm. You don't think Cal has a best friend? I don't know that they talk about. Oh, he's got to have a best friend. Yeah, right? I'm sure he does. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you went from complimenting him to now insulting him. Well, I, I don't know. I just my well, mind he's not was a, going somewhere. He's not other. a guy you want to hang out with a lot. Well, but he's a not. He's there's no reason to dislike him other than how <laughs> what do you how think? he let the snakes run his team. You think like, he wears down? Wears you down with all the niceties? And it's like, oh, okay, well, come on. maybe wears nice you down. Nice guy, with, yeah, but I don't know about hanging out. No. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. But there's no reason to dislike him. No. So when he flips no. burgers, throws up the H, well, there was and a... you win, it's like, okay. That's... Well, uh, but Listen. I'm not like he's throwing up the H, flipping burgers, That's whatever fine. you want to say. You know what else you he know did? You know what? He was a little he bit hired... unlikable before when he was screwing up the team. Yeah, yeah, but he, that was yeah. unlikable. He wasn't screwing them up. Hiring he had David guys Cully who were screwing him up. He had guys who were screwing him up. He didn't screw it up. Well, he did because he couldn't. He wasn't strong enough to get rid of the snakes and recognize the snakes. And frankly, he's really the type of owner you want when yeah. things are going good. And you need to have Hannah McNair there, frankly, doing what she does. They're, they're yeah. doing their whole press run, as you might imagine, leading up to the draft and the unveiling of the uniform. So they're out and about. But Cal had a quote yesterday that I could not believe. He was talking about how the plan, the planning, like he was just this major chess player Peace guy. He was just moving things around and make sure they were set up. Who said this? Cow. He was talking about how this was all the plans. Like the plan, he's this was years in the making. Years in the making to hire David Cully and Lovey Smith. That was the plan. Well, I don't think that's I think he's referring to how the team has been rebuilt with Nick Casario. Years in the making. Well, the team was rebuilt. I don't think the David Cully hire was part of he, the plan. He said it, there's it a plan. Was the you, plan. It, it was part of a plan, and, and then clearly it was not a good one, so they had to Go to Lovey Smith. Cal, just... By the just, way, Lovey was not the plan. Josh McC Yeah, we know. Josh until was Brian Flores was going to sue or, or did sue for racism. Yeah. Uh, then they had that's to pivot. That's 100% true. They, they had, had to pivot. Mm -hmm. I, I had a verified. That's 1 million percent true on my mama and on my baby mama. I wish... No. Known as my wife. Your baby mama. <laughs> okay, yes, your wife. True wife. All right. 8 o'clock, ESPN 97.5. Glad you clar clarified your baby mama. I was uh, like, whoa. Whoa. Don't you have enough? Yeah, you've got plenty. You've yeah. got too many. Yeah. She's my baby's mama. Baby's mama. Yeah. Oh, well, your babies are getting bigger now. Okay. Here's the deal right now. I'm telling you. It's uh it's the it's the weekend is here. How about Saturday? Get on over to Chastang Ford, okay? Because you've got you you need that oil change. You need to get your car tuned up, looked at. You need all of this stuff. Well, you need Chastang Ford because they are great at this stuff. They got an oil change and tire rotation. On Saturdays, you get $20 off the works oil change. Okay, so get there tomorrow. Six quarts of Motorcraft synthetic blender, blended motor oil. The tire rotation, gas engines only, taxes and disposal are not included. So you're going to get 20 bucks off of a $79.95 deal. It is, you need to do this every 5,000 miles. Chastain Ford, this is there for you service-wise. It is, it is where you need to go to get your Ford on, to get your pre-owned vehicle on, to get your service done. It's where you need to go when you need a vehicle. It is my favorite. I mean, my favorite dealership. Love what Patrick and his sister and brother-in-law and everybody over there do. They're fantastic at, at, at getting you in your car at the right price with no add-ons, no markups. They're just going to do it. They're going to do this every single time. So if you're in the market for a Ford car, truck, or take a look at the pre-owned vehicles, ChastangFord.com on 610 at Homestead, not Hempstead, just five minutes from downtown, Chastang Ford.
Welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. John and Lance, along with Dell here with you, watching watching the Masters. It's like the Rockets season's over, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They played last night and lost. Yeah. Okay. Ime had some interesting things to say. And Dell, you, asked, you posed the question, who exactly is he referring to here? They if lost you, last <laughs> night to Utah. If you look at the minutes played, yeah. you could have They a got guess. into it. Cam Whitmore got into it yesterday. Yeah. This team is a chronic is a chronic uh um they get into their, their a fair amount of kerfuffles. Uh, oh. yeah, Jalen Jalen had limited to, I didn't I didn't see it. So he I, played he went one for seven, I believe, and played like nineteen minutes. That's it. Yeah. Del, I mean, this is the guy again, okay, everybody. It's first now Jalen went on a he had a a, a one hell a of a march. Yes. One hell of a march. And since then and before then I mean, I know all the Jalen truthers are out there. Look at this guy. It's and about 75% of the season, it's the Jalen we all know and maybe not don't really love so can't much. go on yeah. that roller coaster ride every year. That's why you have to wait it out. <clears throat> Just see. Show me a good year. It's not too much to ask a player to show you a year well, instead we're getting, of a month. Uh, we're running out of years. We're three he's years. Show. I know. We're three years in, and he hasn't shown us one full straight year yeah. of consistency. I'm just saying, that's why I'm not going to go too fast on that roller coaster ride. I've already got my opinion. If he changes it, fine. But one month doesn't change it. And all this, well, they're actually better without Shingun. That was actually out there with fan base. And Paul Pierce said that. Idiot. You're not going to be. This is why if you made a decision based on a month, you deserve to be a, a terrible organization. And I don't think this organization is a terrible organization. Yeah. It's uh, also why fans don't run organizations. Yep. No, 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 no. And we'll... we'll well, they're going to decision make. Nothing cut in time is coming. Okay. J is is Jalen going to be a guy that you're going to give max or close to max? I, I don't, he hasn't shown that. That's for sure. Maybe a month here, a month there, post all star, but certainly hasn't put in a year. He hasn't put a year together. Uh, here is, here is Ime last night talking about, and you, you, you tell me who he's talking about. The guys look like they didn't want to play. Oh, man. Consciously, subconsciously. Uh, now that we're out of the race, looks like guys didn't want to play and packed it in. So when you only got one guy really show up, Fred, early, that's what it's going to be, especially at the start. What do you want the team to learn in a game like this? To not repeat history and do what we did against Memphis when they sat everybody before All-Star break and um, do what we did against Brooklyn um, and what they've done for the last few years. So um, habits are hard to break and mentalities are hard to change and that's why we are who, where we are record wise and um, you know not achieving our goals but you know you'd be better off saying you don't want to play and get people out there who really want to play who man you hate hearing that right before the season's about to end well mentalities so it's a wake-up call for but, everybody that's well, no season. let me tell you what it is mentalities are hard to change yeah. that's the one you should circle yeah because we what he's telling you is he doesn't believe we're at the end of the year, and if he doesn't think a mentality has changed, somebody's getting moved. And by the way, this is for a team that was up by 10 to start the first quarter. So it wasn't as if the score would tell you that they weren't ready to play, but from what he saw. Well, the only guy that was showed up and was ready to play was Van Vliet. Well, Van Vliet scored 42. Um, he kept them in it, particularly when Utah was. 37 and 42 in his last two? Yeah, when, when Utah was trying to pull away, he kept them in the game. Make, he made a number of big shots. Do you know that shots. almost equals what he's making, 80 million? I mean, he he's making forty million a year, and he's averaging about forty per game the last two. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, I I tuned in at a, he was at about thirty, and Jalen had three at the time. Well, Jalen finished with three. He yeah. might be talking about Jalen, but I think he's talking about multiple players. But his comment about mentality is hard to change. If you get into the off season and Ime is sitting there, knowing what you know about Ime, just from and I'm talking to everybody who's listening right now, knowing what you know about Ime based on comments he's made this year, based on how his teams have performed, based on his sideline demeanor, whatever you want to use, based on his time with the Celtics. Because remember, he has had success. He knows what it looks like. Based on him saying mentalities are hard to change, if he goes into an offseason thinking 
mentalities are hard to change. And by the end of the year, I don't think it changed. One full year with me, it didn't change. Do not think that it's not possible that, and I'm mentioning Jalen because I don't think out, I don't think the guy who's out, Alperin, gets moved. Do not think that Jalen Green's time with the Rockets is not. He could go into next year because he's still on a rookie contract next year. Jalen Green mm-hmm. could go into the next year and get traded at some point during the year. But if they want to take Phase Three, and that's what you've heard, right? They're they're looking at getting mm-hmm. a Phase Three. Phase three, does that happen with an in-season trade, or does phase three happen in the off-season? I, it more than likely happens in the off-season is what you'd like for it to, as part of a grand plan. For him to say mentalities are hard to change, um, it just might be a standard comment that, you know, this is some of the stuff he talked But he talked about guys not wanting to be there, guys quitting prematurely. Man, that is a – the way he said it, it, it was harsh. Yeah. The way he said well, it was he like, ain't fr- what did what did Kelvin Sampson tell us about confrontation? It's necessary. Yep, and you and and you know can't what? be afraid. That's of. that is is you you got two games left to this season, and you got that hanging over you as you go into this off season. That makes that's motivating. Okay, but do you ever get the feeling that he's saying that just because he's trying to motivate? I don't. I think I don't. he's saying it because it's on his mind. Yep. that's what he thinks, and that's the scary part. If you're a player. If he if if Ime Udoka says something, it's not part of a mind game he's playing with you. I don't think. I mean, maybe he does some, but I think more than it being a mind game, I think he's basically just. I think he's basically saying what he's thinking at the time, mm-hmm. and that's a pretty scary one. If you're a player and he thinks that you're just quitting on the rest of the season, I don't know. And mentalities are hard to change. If I'm Jalen and I scored three points, and he's saying this in the post game press conference. I'm taking it to heart. Here's Jalen's 20. The guy named Nathan Fogg put this out there. Here's here is a Rockets fan. The roller coaster ride of Jalen Green's 2024. First 12 games, 16 points a game, 38% field goal percentage, 27% from three. Next five games, 29.8 per game, 51% from the field. Now remember, that's five games, but 36% from three. Next 11 games, 14 points per game. 37 field goal, 22 three-point. Next 15 games, These are this is what you alluded to. 29.3, 49% from the field, 42% from three. We can all agree that was a phenomenal 15-game run. Last seven games, 15.7 per game, 36 field goal, 22%. Three of these runs over, let's see, 7, 18, 40 games. In 40 of these games, he shoot his three-point percentage is, is about 25%. 24%. It's just too erratic to be a top two guy. Yeah. It's just too erratic. I mean, I was very hopeful after that March, but man, is he just this regression back to like really great players, top two players on a team that's competing for a championship. They just don't have stretches like this. When did James ever have a stretch like this? When did Chris Paul ever have a stretch like this? When did Akeem Olajuwon ever have a stretch? T Mac, just I don't. I'm trying to stay Rockets, but the the bottom line is you just don't like great players don't go in funks like Jalen Green goes in. Um, and I don't know, I don't know that that's ending anytime soon. We'll see. Uh, it's still listen. He for a month you were like, holy crap, you got him. He this is the guy. This is the guy. And then he ain't anymore. Can you he imagine just, signing him to? You got excited and signed him to a max dollar no, deal no based way. on that. Can you imagine that? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out what's going to happen this off season. I you you just I don't I, I think it's just too in, inconsistent to to say you know what this is the guy this this is the team. Uh, yet you he you're so worried that he is going to live up to his potential that you know that's the that's the scariest part. He, at some point, like we said, how young is he, right? Dell, when, how long? How, you know, is this the guy, or is is, is he going to become the guy? That's the balance, and that's the tough spot for Rafael Stone and Ime Adoka. Because are we going to judge a kid who, as we talked about, whether you want to blame Steven Silas completely for it, who didn't have a lot of real coaching his first couple of years, and the first time he's had it is in his third season. Are we? Do we toss away the, his 20- and 21-year-old or 19-, 20-year-old seasons and go, look, 
He didn't really get the chance to develop, so we're really starting from scratch here, but we're closer to a real decision than we would want to considering his developmental track. Yep. So there, there are some issues that they're going to have to get well, through to figure out. It's not easy because Jalen shows he flashes, he flashes true star potential, yep, yep. but, man, and he's only 22 and one year with EMA. But man, you have a finite deadline. You have a hard – you have a hard out that you got to make a decision. All right. Uh, I don't know which way I'm going to bet, but I know I could bet. I don't know if they've got that bet, whether or not Jalen Green will be a rocket next uh, – how long he'll be a rocket. I'm not sure that that's a, uh, on mybookie.ag, promo code bet975. I do know there's all kinds of bets. I mean, anything that you want to – You did you want to play Tiger this week? Did you go under, over, whatever the case may be? You had all kinds of prop bets on Tiger, all kinds of pro prop bets on Scotty Scheffler or whomever, all the guys out there you could have bet on. Listen, if you're looking for the best way to play when and get paid, how about this? All the way up to $1,000, your first deposit. You put in 200 and you got 300 to play with. You put in 1000 you got 1500 to play with. It is the problem. I don't know that other other places are doing this. I do know that it's been going on forever at my bookie. You're not getting it with your local bookie, but you are getting it at mybookie.ag promo code bet nine seven five. Easy way to get your money out too. Put your money in, get your money out. You got all the fun of prop bets and and up to the minute odds and live gambling, also live casino uh, gambling as well, where you got live dealers as opposed to just a computer. You're looking for the best way to have fun while you're watching these games mybookie.ag promo code bet 975 You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. 713 It's Friday. It's basically a holiday show, okay? Because Friday is, is a holiday, okay? Every Friday here well, on the show. Isn't the holidays about gifts? This, well, you, the gift that just keeps on giving well, is the Masters. No, I was leading into something else. We have golf tickets to give away. Oh, 
We have golf tickets to give away? Uh, the Chevron Championship. What? I know you guys don't care what happens around the station, but we've been doing that all week long. You guys just have decided not to <sighs> for whatever it. reason. I missed that part. Yeah, well, you got an email. Well, oh. I didn't. I haven't heard you give any away all week. I gave away I gave away one yesterday on my show and then the day before. You oh. have an email that tells you we're giving away tickets. I know that, but why haven't you given them away? Because it's just your show you want to give them away. I mean, no. we might as well not even exist anymore. You know the that? email was for everyone. Right? You're right? supposed to give those tickets away. I'm not supposed to read it for you. It's just terrible. All I right. know you're lazy. You Let's can't even turn give, your own right, microphone. 8.30 exactly. Okay, we got two tickets to the Chevron? Yes, and it's for particular days because, you know, they have different sessions, right? You're a golf guy. You go to tournaments, right? Yeah. The tickets are for individual days. And I believe what we've decided, because you guys decided never to give away tickets, that it'll be for the Saturday session next week of the Chevron Championship. Third round of the tournament, all right? The Chevron Championship. Uh, at exactly 8.30, give a call. Caller number four is going to get those two tickets to Saturday's round. Bring your daughter. Hey, dad's out there. Bring your daughter out there and let her let her see these women play. And uh, and you know what? Put a golf club in her hand and get a scholarship, okay? Dad, this is a way you get a scholarship for, for your kid and you don't pay for college. Lance, when, don't you hope? Why don't you put a, a golf club in Maddie's hand? Uh, That's not her thing. That's not going to be well, it's not her thing because you won't in. take her out to the tournament. Nah, it's not going to be her thing. I'll take, yeah, take her out to the tournament. My daughter's a big time feminist. So would she like watching yeah. women play? Absolutely. Yeah. Is she going to play? No. She's a big time. She's in musicals. She's in theater. She's, uh, she's got a great voice and Didn't sings. Did she go up to Portland for Sacramento? Stuff? Sacramento, same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's a swimmer. She is not a golfer. Dirty, filthy. Cities. I can already see it's not. She's not fluid in the upper half with the swing. I can just already. You can tell that. I can already tell this she's, is not going to be. So she's a swimmer. She has full fluidity there, but not with golf. No, fluidity? there's just a certain coordination that's not hmm. as not there. fluid. Yeah, okay. I just don't think she's a golfer. <laughs> well, okay. Have well, you tried? Yeah, maybe you should try. My daughter. My, she doesn't try. If she de if she decides she wouldn't want to do something, we just told her we're like, man, you. You should take advantage of John. You studied abroad. I've even brought this up to Monty. Mm -hmm. You spent a year abroad in Italy, right? No, in Spain. Oh, Spain. Spain. That's right. Uh, how did you like it? I loved it. It was awesome. We brought it up to Monty. Hey, just like as a, you know what you, you know you've been to Amsterdam before. You've been to, where else did we take? You've been to Spain. You should you should study abroad when you go on college. Oh, vehemently opposed. Why? Just she's just decided, and we ask her why are you so. I just don't want to, okay? I don't want to leave there. Why are you trying to make vehemently opposed? And I don't like. Why are you trying to get rid of your years old? I don't know. If she's thinking that we're like this would be like seven years away, eight years are just a uh, eight years away. Well, she'll change her mind. Don't worry. Absolutely, she's absolutely not. No, she, she will, will change not her mind. do that. Uh, yeah. I mean, spends a few more years with you people. She'll yeah. want to get out of the house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Just want to let you know the Chevron Championship is in Houston. It'll be April 17th through the 21st at the club at Carlton Woods, John. You That's, like that place, don't you? I love that. In place. the Woodlands. Um, and if you don't get tickets from us, which you'll be able to have the opportunity throughout the day, you can go to the thechevronchampionship.com. Tickets available right, th right at that website. But we're giving away tickets at 830. What's the caller again, John? Number four. Caller four at 831 is a pair of tickets to the Saturday session, which is next Saturday, um, not this upcoming, not tomorrow. So uh, be ready. Call in. But only call in if you want to go. And, you know, take take your wife. Take your daughter. Make it a day. Yeah. Yes. They'll love it. Everybody, you'll love it. I'm telling you. They're great players. Let's get Pena in here and let's talk about the Astros. Oh, by the way, I got the answer to our pitching woes right now. Well, What? Did you did you guys not see the Rays? They have severed ties with Jake Odorizzi. Go to the phones. What? God, I hate you. What are you talking about? Jake Odorizzi is available. Why they sever ties? Because he sucks. And you want to bring we a got guy an who Italian sucks? Who may here? not be very good right now. We don't need Odorizzi. Uh, Odorizzi. Odorizzi. Oh, is is have you ever been an All Star? No. Actually, who was your first baseman? Nick Mintz. Uh, Tre Troy, uh, 
Trey, Trey Mancini. Mancini. Yeah, Troy Mancini. Trey. Trey. Trey Mancini. Another Italian. Another. We're done with the Italians. Oh, really? Made one of the biggest plays in World Series history. Okay. World Series when history. When he caught that ball on, at first base. Yeah. When he when he fielded a ground ball. Yeah. One of the biggest one plays of the biggest in plays. Major League history. Right. All right. 713-780-3776. If you want to tell us we're panicking too early... It's not a panic. We're just, it's You're a sports talk show. Well, it's a sports talk show. Don't say I, we. What do you got a mouse in it's your a, pocket? It's a sports I talk show. Panicking. You think everything's going to be fine? Well, you said this fine. is the greatest Astros team. We got team. five all stars on, Did the, you on, say the D, on the IL. Greatest Astros team ever? Yeah, I'm still there. That's right. Yeah. Five Pan- current? Look. They'd be all stars this year if they're healthy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> they have been historically, historically. in their life. That's okay. right. Just like Lamar Jackson. Well, was, we have three All Stars in the front office. Was an MVP office. in 2019. Do you think okay. the Astros lead? Like, it, has any other team had this many All Stars in their front office making decisions? Bagwell, think, Biggio, oh, yeah. Jackson. Think about anybody those, ever had those Hall this of Famers. Hall, this three Hall of Famers. Three Hall of Famers making decisions. Three Hall of Fame decision makers. Nobody has this one. You like Tiger's new logo? It's a tiger, and it's got 15 in there because of the. Majors, fifteen no. majors. Oh, I thought that stole was it. Num- he stole it from Puma. I thought that was a number of women. He stole it from Slazinger. We gotta, we we gotta get Pena in here. Pena, what up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, look, man, the, the, the I think the Astros' downfall is is, is is starting now. I mean, it's it, it's not for. I mean, I mean, it's not bad play and it's not you know good play either. But I think it's just the decision making, and it, I think it started with. Bringing in Justin Verlander last year, we, well, I mean, yeah, it's Justin Verlander, ooh, but he's not young Justin Verlander. He's forty year old Justin Verlander. This guy hasn't even played this year. He barely played last year. He, what are you gonna do with a forty year old pitcher? Like, I mean, come on, guys. Like, I mean, we're, like, what are we thinking? Like, it's, you're gonna trade a top prospect? We're hurting on top top prospect. You're gonna bring a a guy that that his arm barely even works. It, de- it definitely doesn't work in the, in, in the postseason. Like why? Why bring him? We should have got somebody else. I mean, well, what are we doing? I, I, that's, that's terrible, terrible, terrible. And, and one more thing, man. Screw the Masters, guys. It's UFC three hundred from top to bottom. Car, car, the card is stacked. Yeah. Man, screw the Masters, man. UFC three hundred, man. Let's go, baby. Let's it, go. It is a loaded UFC card. A loaded UFC, and I love the fact that they're leaning into the movie three hundred with the logo of three hundred. This is. Pereira versus Hill is going to be a phenomenal fight. Uh, they've got Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway, which is going to be just – they. it's got a chance to be fight of the night as well. Uh, Charles Ola, uh, Oliveira is on the card. You've got – oh, my gosh, I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at the entire card. This is – the UFC 300 card is absolutely packed. I'm, yeah. I'm, I have not gotten the last two. I'm 100% getting – uh, gonna rent this one. Yeah, but how do we respond to screw the Masters? <laughs> that and the Astros going and getting that old broken down Justin Verlander. Oh yeah, you know the guy that got your World Series. Uh, yeah, but did he get him a World Series last year? No, he got him one game away. He was the reason for that. Yeah, he was a big reason. Mm. Yep, he bro- sure. old broken down arm pretty don't. Sure work. He was I believe good, his yeah. he's old broken and his arm don't work anymore. It does. Is that right? He <laughs> he, he hasn't pitched this year. Why did we do? We didn't sign him this off season, by the way. This is traded for him. Year part. Yeah. Okay. You gave away a top pros- top prospects for a broken down pitcher <laughs> who can't even get outs on the Sugarland for the Sugarland Space Cowboys. He couldn't. We'll see if he can get outs now in Albuquerque because that's where he's. Uh, if Justin Verlander's is. broken down, we are done. Uh, that's kind of a true statement. That's yeah, pretty true. That's not that's not fatalistic. It's not ca- uh, catastrophizing the situation. <laughs> We're waiting on Justin Verlander. Like he is a, right now at this particular time, he is one of those. When you throw the uh, the life raft, the little circular, what is it called? The uh, you know that's on the side of ships. Is, is it called a life raft? Life raft. You know, no, the, the thing you circular throw one. What's the name? I don't know what it's oh, called. Uh, life preserver. Yeah, life preserver. Well, you wear preservers, right? Whatever. He's the thing you throw out there that you try to grab on in the water when oh. you don't want to drown. I'm praying Verlander gets back and is really good Verlander really because good. Hunter Brown right now, good Lord. If you missed Hunter Brown's act yesterday, what does he pitch? Uh, an inning and a third? Is he, that what his last two no, starts he two have been? Thirds. Oh, he got two thirds yesterday. So he's pitching an inning and two thirds. He this year? Yeah, he he got out of the first inning. No, 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 no. Oh. The last game, last Friday's game. Yeah. 
That was he close went too. one inning where it was bases loaded. He needed like forty pitches to get out of the inning, and he somehow got out without a run. Then the second inning was the onslaught, five runs, and I think he only got a third of an inning in in his last start. I think he went one and a third, and this yeah you're right one and two thirds because this time he went a third of an inning. So he's gone one and two thirds innings, I believe, in his last two starts. Three point two innings. He That's went. What he's he went three innings against Texas, he, and they lost ten to two. He yeah. went three. Three. And then he went two-thirds of an inning against Kansas City and gave up nine. Okay, three and two-thirds and 14 He's given up 14 runs. His ERA is 34.36. That's kind of high. Is it still lower than than Blair Henley? No. Well, no, it's actually not. I was going to say, is it lower than... Arigetti? Is it lower than Presley? Oh. Arigetti's 21. Is it lower than Presley? Presley, It's lower than Presley. It's lower than Presley? It can't be lower than Presley. No, I think... So we have now, how many pitchers do we have over 10? <laughs> I know it's go. small sample size. Yeah. I'm just curious. What um, do we have? I'm going to guess over under three and a half. Um, hold on. <laughs> and why are you looking for that? The word. Hey, Brian Abreu ain't any great shakes right now. The word we were looking for is life buoy. That's what it's called. Life buoy. Life buoy? That's yeah. what they're called. That's what they call it. Never heard of it. How many pitchers ERA are over, over 10? Over 10. Over under three and a half right now. But frankly, Abreu got rocked yesterday too. So. Okay. So we got uh, Parker oh, Musinski, 11. Ryan Presley is 11.57. Um, Hunter Brown, they say, is 16.43. They probably were counting yesterday. That's uh, Spencer Arigetti, 21. And Blair Henley, 135. <laughs> what's, what's Brian Abreu? Brian Abreu, not that great. Brian Abreu is his ERA at this point in our lives is 9.53, just uh, short. So he's under the cutoff line. Yeah. He made the cut. He made the cut. He made the cut. Yeah. Everyone else over 10. Brandon Belak, 7. Uh, Josh Hader, 6. France, 4.76. Okay. Look at Montero, 2.84. Oh, you don't like that signing, uh, Jeff Bagwell. How's Bagwell Linux now? My apologies. Okay. My apologies. Let that man keep making decisions. We got a break. 831. You got to talk about Zadix. Good. Zadix Jewelers, 45 years in the business. Zadix Jewelers is where you go when it's time for you to have the very best of whatever it is that you're looking for. The The selection is incredible. It's unmatched. 28,000 square feet. They started with 12. They started with 1,200 square feet. And they're now 28,000 square feet. They're still on Post Oak. Now they've moved to their two-level store, which is at 1801 Post Oak. But I'm telling you right now, when it comes to fine jewelry, Zadik is your trusted source for quality fine jewelry in Houston. They've got curated selections of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelet from the top designers and the top brands that you're going to find. They even have their own Zadik collection, which looks amazing. They will work with you on finding exactly what it is that is going to blow her away for your wife, for your girlfriend. And, of course, engagement rings are top of the line. No one beats Zadik. They have an entire upstairs dedicated to everything having to do with the bridal, with with with, with the bride, really. Go upstairs and check it out for yourself. If you want to create your own custom piece, they've got master jewels who can handcraft beautiful heirlooms into modern work of arts. So if there's a... A ring that's been passed down, there's a necklace, anything that's been passed down, they can reconfigure it and turn it into something brand new that's incredible. Make sure that you go to Zadik. It's at 1801 Post Oak Boulevard. Or for more information, you can go online at Zadok, Z-A-D-O-K.com.
Hey, time to talk about Aqueduct Plumbing. Time to talk about Billy Brown. It's a golf weekend, so the first thing you'll think of is Billy Brown when, when you, whenever you think of golf. Here's the deal: is he not not only not only is he uh, known for all of his golf, but he's also known for being just excellent, excellent at this plumbing thing. Okay, he has started this business. He's been in it a while, and he has just been. He, he did it on one thing. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you great service. I'm going to have guys who really, really know what they're doing and are, are so efficient at it. We're not going to gouge you. We're just not going to. We're going to come and give you a free evaluation of whatever your problem is, which a lot of plumbers just don't do. If you have any issues whatsoever with your plumbing, or you need to, you know what. You need to clean out those tankless water heaters. They do because there's so much residue that's building in, up in them. It, it, you, did you think about that? Have you gone five, ten years without cleaning out your tankless water heater? Do it now. 281-488-6238. 281-488-6238. Any plumbing needs that you have, it's aqueductplumbingcompany.com. You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. All right. Welcome back here on uh, ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Where are – so, Astros lose yesterday. Rockets lose yesterday. Rockets looks like this, that they're just you know, they're cashing it in, and they, they lost to the Jazz yesterday. Two more games. They're two games under 500. They need to win both of these games to finish at 500. And you know what? That's something to shoot for. It is really something to a 500 season. The 39 wins is been, is is better than Vegas thought that they were going to be. <clears throat> Much better. Better. But this team needs to to finish on a high note and go into this off season as a 500 team. The best non playoff team that there is. And it, because it's not even arguable in the East, and they're the best of the West, so they're the best play, non-playoff team. They're on the brink of doing something. It'll be interesting to see the offseason for your Houston Rockets. Let's see what Gilbert has to think about what's going what's going on in the world of sports. Hey, Gilbert. How are you doing in there, gentlemen? Good. What's going on, Gilbert? How what, you feeling? What it do? Oh, man, I did ask for a they're going to win the Bubby World Champion probably about the year 2025, probably. You think they will be world champions again? What'd you say? You said they will be world champions again by 2025? Yeah. Oh, not so you're, year, no. well, you're mad at them, but you also think they're going to be world champions next year. This year will be the New York Yankees world champion, probably, you know. And Yankees? I, and then, and uh, and uh, next year the Texans will go to the Super Bowl. You know, next year the Texans go to so, Super Bowl. So I mean, Bowl? things are looking up in the city. If yeah. you're going to tell me the Astros are going to be champions next year, I'll take a down year this year. Yeah. And Texans going to the Super Bowl. I mean, that's you. You called saying you're mad at the Astros, but what we got out of this, Gilbert, is actually good news. Is actually a very positive look at the future. Hey, 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 hey. We, we should have kept Dusty Baker as a, as a head coach anyway, not a new coach anyway, no. Yeah, not this one. And I also a little mad at uh, O.J. Simpson died yesterday. Yeah, we heard. He's mad that O.J. Simpson died. You're mad? Died. Why are you mad? I'm not mad. I'm sad. Oh, oh you're sad. sad. I'm sorry. Yeah. Why are you sad O.J. died yesterday? You're a good man anyway, you know. He's a good man. Pretty good man. Pretty good guy. Yeah. What did, I yeah, wonder what ESPN okay. had to say about him. Pretty good guy. What do you think about that, eh? Gilbert, what thought- do I think about you saying OJ was a good man? Uh, I think that he was. He was a bad man anyway. He was what? He, he was a. Uh, he was a nice man anyway. He's a nice man. Nice he man. Was five, you know, and deny everything, you know. What, say that last part again. He, something's happened with his phone. Say it again, Gilbert. He was a he, he, he's a sophisticated man, you know. Sophisticated man. Sophisticated. I see. Yeah, ESPN was, didn't uh, eulogize him like that. Okay. They apparently you, you have a differing. So you liked OJ? Yeah, I 
Yeah, yeah. I used to when I was a little kid, you know. Yeah, yeah. Dude, so did I. It was my favorite running back when I was. Did anything happen that would have changed your opinion? Yeah, can I ask you where you were in 19? 19- Do you remember where you were in 1994? Where we mean the night was. Well, you know, where were you in 1994? Were you here in Houston? Were you in Austin? Where Where were you in 1994? I was in Houston. Do you remember anything about O.J. Simpson at that time or in the 90s? I was in a club when he went there at the uh, Bronco Chase. Yeah. Okay. Remember why? Do you remember? Over 45 in uh, Rank and Row, you know. He, the, well, you were at a club on, off of 45 in Rankin Road? Yeah, somewhere around there anyway. What you know. club were you at? We got a I don't remember what the name of the club was anyway. Well, what were you doing at the club? I don't remember anyway. I Watching the Rockets 20, game. <laughs> Remember the Rockets were in yeah the, the Rockets were playing yeah right, 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 the Rockets was on on TV anyway you know all right so the Gilbert was, so Gilbert was watching TV the finals that's right in well, the he Bronco was at a chase club. well it might have been a sports he, he bar maybe dancing. he calls it you don't know I, maybe you were dancing Gilbert I don't know <laughs> I don't know but um, do you do you remember the Bronco chase I remember it do you remember why they were chasing him and AC Cowling. So, you know, it was on the TV anyway, you know. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. But do you do you remember what happened with AJ uh, with OJ Simpson? Cuz you did say he's a nice guy. I was just curious if you remember, do you remember the trial thing they had with him? Yeah. Okay. All right. I just was making sure we had all the facts there and Do appears- you remember what the trial was about? Killing his wife for his friend. Okay. Okay. Well, so you know that Gilbert and, knows. Yeah. And with all of that, you still hold the opinion that OJ was a nice man. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. We're entitled okay. to our own opinions. That's fine. Don't try to sway that man's opinion I didn't of a person. I asked the question. I leading the okay, witness. You are. No, it's not leading a lead. the witness. Okay. He, he, I he gave had a trial him, where he killed two people. I you asked that, a, and you still think he's a nice man. I was unaware if he knew about that particular. Thing and he was, and then he answered my question. Yeah. That's you, not leading. What do you think of Bill Cosby? Hold on, hold on. No, let's not go to Bill Cosby yet. What, Gilbert, do you remember if the glove fit? Did the glove fit? What'd you say? Did the glove fit with AJ, with OJ? Why do I keep yeah, yeah, no, it didn't fit. Nope, didn't fit. Didn't fit. So you must do what? It didn't fit, did it? No, no it didn't it, fit. Listen, what was the saying? If the glove don't fit, you, you must. must. No chance. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. Okay, uh, acquit, but yeah. I mean, that was pretty famous. Now, who is the most famous person that came out of that whole trial? Who is the most influential person out of the whole trial? Is it O.J. Simpson? Um, uh, no, Johnny. Who was? No, it's not Johnny. What do you mean? Watch hard. Robert Kardashian. He, well, he, he offered Marsha Clark. No, not Marsha Clark. It's and not Christopher Darden. It's Robert Kardashian. Why? The most influential. Because he shot out all the Kardashians. Well, they were already, what do you mean? Well, they were already. The Kardashians have taken over the world. All, first of all, shot out is. That's not the way. Not to a put great it. way to describe yes. it. And and they were. Some they of them were born out. already. And no one even thinks about Robert Kardashian no. when they think about the Kardashians. But he was influential, influential because what can't – The wow. Kardashian kids – Who, do, who do more people know about, OJ or the Kardashians? The, the Kardashians. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. Kardashian. Gilbert agrees. Gilbert agrees. You like the Kardashians, Gilbert? Are they good people? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he ain't about that. They're he, all right. He ain't about that life. They're all right. All right. Uh, that's a little lesson. Next time we'll find out. Think about Bill Cosby, and we will we'll ask you about What's that. What's your opinion time, of Bill Cosby? Okay, that's next. Okay, he's next time Gilbert man. calls. He's, uh, he said there he, he is. A, he said he's a bad man. Say it again, Gilbert. Say it again. Yeah, man, man. I took a picture with him anyway. Remember that? Yeah, remember. I'll never forget I, that anyway. I didn't remember <laughs> that. But you said, is he a good man or bad man? 
Batman. There Bill it is. Crosby Bang. Was. There, there is. Bill Cosby, Gilbert Batman. Gilbert right from wrong. Yep. Gilbert's teaching us. Well, I don't want to play a game called Gilbert, Batman, Goodman. <laughs> Why not? I just don't want Let's, to. I think it's my favorite game. Let that game. man live his life. I think now it's my favorite game. No. I yeah. don't want to play bad man, good man. <laughs> no. Jeff Bagwell. <laughs> Not good man. Good man. Good man. Really good, right? Jim Gilbert, Hall of Famer. Not a great contract negotiator, but good man. <laughs> yeah. 846, we're done. Oh, All right, goodbye. Bye. Anyway. Time to talk about give me the Didn't Tomorrow see morning. that coming today. O.J. Simpson was a good man. He was a nice man. Like, wow, I didn't see that coming today. Time to talk about give me the, you know, he's a nice man, John Clay Wolf. He's a nice man. And he's a nice man because he gives you a lot of money. He gives you more money than other people will give you. Is that not a nice man? Yes, that's a nice man. You know why it's a nice man? Because you want his money and he gives it to you. And tomorrow morning, you're going to be able to hear him right here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Very funny show. Really good show. And well-produced. And he's ready to he's ready to buy your car. Okay, On the show. You can do it right there on the radio, or you can just easily go to the website as well. And you're going to have to go to the website either way. You could go to the, you know, call them at the show, but you're going to have to, at some point, go to the website, show them your car, give them the pictures. It's He's awesome. You're looking for the best way to sell your vehicle. There's one way to go. Give me the VIN.com. That's give me the VIN.com. You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. For those of you wondering, Tiger finished up his first round. One over. Not too bad, though, considering also Brooks Kepka fired a 73. By the way, under 74 and a half pays. Tiger was a 74 and a half is under over, so it pays. Wyndham Clark shot one over. John Rahm shot one over. Some pretty good players. All right. Uh, still leading the way, Bryson DeChambeau at seven. And Scotty Scheffler at six. Cameron Davis shot a five under. Max Homa, five under. Wonderful. Hey, Wonderful. Metro, I'm you. That's, not, that's not it. Okay. Cameron Young, for those of you who care, two under. I care because I've got him. 
two under. Thank you. <laughs> that's that's the remix. Yes, people enjoy the Masters remix. That's your Masters. What about what about uh, what's his name's remix? Who's what's his name? Chris oh, Vernon. Chris Vernon. Yeah. Jordan Spieth, seven over. Everybody, seven. So which which one do you like better, our Masters update or Chris Vernon's? Chris Vernon's. Let's hear Chris Vernon's. I I listened to it yesterday. He won't have a new one today. I don't think he's on yet. But let's listen to Chris Vernon's from yesterday. All right. You got to imagine the, the guy is. In a green jacket, sunglasses usually. He's standing up, sunglasses, standing up. green jacket. He's got a putter in his right hand. Yeah. He's got a sock puppet on his left hand. He's, He's got four people dressed as dressed as different animals. Animals dancing behind him, doing different kinds of dances behind him. He's got his producer behind the glass with sunglasses on and like a hoodie that's tied up real tight, and he's just throwing in ad libs mm-hmm. is what you'll hear. Um, this is not his best that he's ever done. He's done better ones, but they keep up with golf now. You can tell by what he says. Like one of my favorites was last year when he did Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed, stop improving your lie. <laughs> stop eating all of the pie. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here is Chris Vernon yesterday. The Chris Vernon show. It's based well, in Memphis. He's got a turtle, a bumblebee, a dog, and a bear behind him. Yeah. All right. What's going on at Augusta? That's what's going on at Augusta. Eric Van Ruin. Who? Eric Van Ruin. He gonna ruin your day. He gonna ruin your day. What's going on at Augusta? Say amen at the corner. Say amen at the corner. Yo, where is Willie Z? Willie Z? Yo, where is Willie Z? One under. Willie Z is one under. One under. Willie Z is one under. One under. Willie Z got the broomstick. So you better not try snitch. Willie Z got the broomstick. So you better not try snitch. That's what's going on at the gut. It's going on at Augusta. Where is Billy Mick? Yo, where is Billy Mick? Eva Paul. Yo, where is Billy Mick? Eva Paul. Yo, where is Billy Mick? Billy Mick got the picks. Billy Mick got the picks. Where the Paul at? Trying to hit the ball straight. <laughs> Sweating mad brains over eight. <laughs> Trying to hit the ball straight. Woo. Sweating mess brains over eight. I relate. Billy Mix got the pick. Parlays. Billy Mix got the pick. Tony B. Where he be now? Tony B. Yo, where is Andy Sharp play? Yo, where is Andy Sharp play? One over. Ooh. Ooh. Yo, where is that the shop play? Hold on. Wait for him to get to you're gonna like uh Rory McElroy. Wait until he gets well, to uh, find fast the, forward just the, a little well, bit where I'll, he gets let to. Let me yeah. find the Rory McIlroy. Okay. Uh, Wait, he can find Rory McIlroy. No, you'll <laughs> like Rory McIlroy's live stuff. And the other good one was, um, that's a really good one. And there's another one as well that's pretty good. Uh, Tiger hadn't teed off yet because they always get really excited about Tiger Woods. But that's like something going on at Augusta. Augusta. Something going on at Augusta. Shit. Oh, oh. The baby's dancing. <laughs> Your baby's dancing. The baby's to, dancing to, to what something's going on at Augusta. Is that considered trap music? It's Memphis, so I don't know what that. That's a Memphis. 
No, whose beat is that? That's a no. It's not. It's like Waka Flocka or somebody like that. Who's it, not Memphis? But it feels Memphisy. It feels Memphisy. Charlie likes that segment. She <laughs> likes to dance to it. Charlie's your granddaughter. My granddaughter. Yep. Uh, Eight fifty six. ESPN ninety seven five and a ninety two. Oh, Anthony from New York is here. Oh, hey, Anthony, what's going on? Good morning. How are you? Good. What's going on, Anthony? Well, I, I just want to I just want to throw out my my thoughts on the Astros season. Uh, first of all, it's only the middle of April. Relax. Uh, secondly, if we do happen to have a bad season, you know, I, I, I'm trying to I'm thinking that it might be easier to make decisions contract wise at the end. I'm trying to I'm trying to pull positives out of any way this season goes. And um, the pitching is definitely more of a problem. The hitting will come around. And um, I'm going to end by saying I'll be down. Uh, I'll be down in my favorite city uh, the third week of uh, August to see Chris Stapleton and uh, watch the Astros uh, kick the uh, Red Sox butt. Good. I will talk to you. In, yeah. So I'll. Uh, I'm going to. I want to end my call with you guys. Said a lot better than I do. I'll talk to you guys later. All right, buddy. It's Anthony from New York. He comes in. He's big Astros fan. Huge Astros, Astros fan. Yeah, big Astros fan. Huge. Can't be great being in New York as an Astros fan right now. No, not with the Yankees playing well and the Astros sucking. No, it's, it's got, it can't be great at all. Cannot be great. And I'm telling you, Jake Odorizzi's out there, and you guys, I mean, I've got I've got the solution in here. Be for I can't, real. I be can't for real. Anything. I'm real. No, 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 no. Be I'm for real. real. Find an answer. It starts with probably getting rid of pitching coach within the next month. It, it probably. I would imagine. Somebody's got to pay the price. Somebody's got Something's got to happen. If it's this bad. Because you think Jim Crane is just cool with it? Yeah. Um, Do you? Jim Crane is not cool with it. Yeah. He's not cool. Does he ever like he just losing? He is not. He cannot be happy. He right makes now. changes when they're winning championships. Yeah. Oh, he fires a GM. Well, he after didn't a World him. Series, after yeah, a like, World Series, and not good enough. I've got. Why do I need you for when I've got Reggie Jackson and Jeff Bagwell? Oh, stop! Please don't do that anymore. Why? Because it's Please. true. It's, there is some. I know they got Dana Brown, but it's also kind of true. Yeah, no, no, no. It, it's it's really true. Houston Safe and Lock is true too. Houston Safe and Lock is where you get your safe on, where you get your lock on. Do you need? Is that what? What kind of? Locks you need. Derek is here for now you. we're getting the save. Yeah. So here's the deal. Uh, you've got a gun at home. You need a safe. You need to have a safe. You need to put it in there. Quick access. You can get it anytime. But the kids can't get in there. You need to make sure. You need to make sure the kids can't get at those guns. Okay. So that's that's one thing. Secondly, if you've got a business, you need a safe. Okay. So the bad guys can't get in there. You got to have one that you can bolt to the ground. They'll do that. You got to have one that's heavy enough. You got to have one that they can't break into. You got that. Yep, because because he's got that as well. I mean, he's got the selection like nobody else has at Westheimer and the Beltway. He's got one at Work Nine Ten. That's King Safe and Lock, same company. But they are the biggest. They're the best. There's a reason that they're the best is because they sell more than anybody else. And when they sell more, they got a warehouse full of them. Then they can give you a better price for them because they you buy they buy in bulk. And you get the savings. So you're looking for the best way to get that, that safe or your locks changed or whatever you need locksmith-wise. There's one place to go, 975safe.com, 975safe.com.
You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. <laughs> A big surprise, Cub fan Timmy. Neat stuff. Bring back the female golfer. Okay. Timmy's unhappy about something we did. No, he's There's a big shock. permanently cranky about the show. No, he's cranky. He's cranky, Timmy. Stick Not to sports. Fan, Timmy. Stick cranky. to sports. Okay, uh, Kentucky found its man. BYU head coach Mark Pope. And you wonder why? Mark Pope? If you're a basketball fan, you know why. Yeah. 1996 captain of the national championship team at Kentucky. Kentucky was on the lookout for a guy who who had coached at a religious institution. They were at their Scott Drew. He said, nah, I'm good. Then they pivoted towards their one of their own, who happened to be at BYU. Yeah, and he's got uh, – he's the first, I think, coach at BYU to have 20 wins, three straight 20-win seasons to start his career there. Apparently, Kentucky fans aren't happy about this. No, well, they don't want the BYU coach. They don't. What's well, so funny? They not just the don't. the BYU coach. He's their guy. And they don't want him. That's what's weird about this is he actually played at Kentucky and won a national championship. And he's not. Was he Tubby Smith, Kentucky? Mm. 96. Was that Tubby? It probably was. No, that was Cal. I mean, that was oh, um, no. Patino. Patino. Oh, man. It was Patino. Yeah. 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 So it was one year before we went on the air. So it was, yeah, it was Patino. Um, he was uh, – he's one of their guys. Of course, the people who are talking most on Twitter, they don't know Mark Pope is Kentucky. They weren't working, watching right. basketball in 96. Right. A lot of the people on Twitter. So, they don't know. They're just like, oh, BYU's coach, that's trash. Well, I think that they were a little scared of being turned down once again. You, you don't want it to turn into a Notre Dame situation. You're Notre Dame. You're Kentucky. You are the blue bloods of your sports. And coaches don't want to go there. Dude, remember when they got down to... It was embarrassing for Scott Drew to say no, Dan Hurley to say no, no thank you. It's embarrassing for Kentucky. And I don't know that they settled. Mark Pope is probably going to be a great coach there. Now... They settled a little, maybe, based so, on who they thought they deserved. So you just had Cal leave. John Calipari just left. Calipari has had great success. He just left. Now, he wasn't having great success recently, but... If John Calipari left, why is Scott Drew going to want to go there? He's got a pretty good gig going on right now. Yeah. And guess what? Texas is leaving. The 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 conference, Oklahoma's leaving. Like, he's still got to fade Houston, obviously, and Kelvin Sampson. But that's a pretty good setup he's got there in the Big 12. So, the show before I said, okay, so now guess what? Kentucky was Calipari, right? When... Derek Rose or John or John Wall or Anthony Davis or Carl Anthony Towns when they want when they want to do something with they're going to go to Arkansas now they're not going to do well not Derek Rose because he wasn't there he's in Memphis but the John Walls and Anthony Davises are they still going to have that tie with Kentucky Absolutely. or are they going to have that tie with Calipari no does does Kevin Durant have any tie with who is his coach Rick Barnes. He didn't have any tie with – his tie was with Texas. Yeah. Those guys are Kentucky. Yeah, Texas is a little different. And Derek, and, Why? And Kentucky's a, a blue-blood basketball yeah, program. Yeah, I know. I know. They, they, no, these guys are Kentucky. They're not going to Arkansas. Do you go to – do Oilers fans go to the Tennessee Titans? No. We don't we, – Some idiots did. No, but we don't think of them as the – like, oh, that whole dumb thing where Earl Campbell's forced to – or all these people are forced to be Tennessee Titans? No. They're going to be – no, they're Kentucky. You would never do that. I think just because your coach leaves. Coaches leave all the time. I I mean, it's not so out of their own possibility. I've seen, I've seen it happen. I've mm. seen guys go show up and support their ex-coach at a different spot. That isn't their school. The, the issue would be it's still the SEC. So they are probably not, you're probably not going to see them wearing Kentucky or Arkansas gear. But if Cal was like at in the Big 12 or something, I, Actually, uh, I wouldn't I, be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised at all if you don't see a Carl Anthony Towns or an Anthony Davis at an Arkansas so game. They ain't wearing Arkansas support, stuff. I didn't say wearing Arkansas. I said showing up and supporting Cal. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. That wouldn't surprise me. This that wouldn't surprise to, me at all to back up their ex coach yes. at, at a game. I, that wouldn't surprise me at all. It's but they would before. have to make that trip. In other words, it's not like well, you just happen to be here in New York, so we're going to go to the St. John's game. Oh well, yeah, it's purpose. Check it out. You'd have to go to Arkansas or or uh, with Cal. Arkansas is going to be in bigger yeah tournaments. Well, when Arkansas goes to Kentucky, 
or when Arkansas goes to New York because they're in – I don't even know if the preseason in ITA exists, but a tournament like that, Arkansas is going to be what in those Arkansas, now. What about Arkansas, Kentucky? There's your perfect spot. I don't you know. Can if, do both. I don't know if it's a perfect spot. Now you're in a little bit now of a situation. Now you don't want – now, see, you just want drama. I don't want – no. Because you're not, an NBA drama guy. No, I'm, I'm saying that what you're suggesting isn't such – what John's suggesting isn't out the realm of possibility no, yeah, that it happens. About the, the point being that it was Cal that drew him there. The point being that they're lo- they're they're going to have a loyalty to Cal too. Now you know what they might still have one, one and done guys have, have there. I don't know exactly. How much they're one and done guys. Do That's they why even I... know Mark Pope and will show up for Kentucky games? I don't know. I don't know. I just tell me the tell me where all this happens. I've never heard of this anywhere. Else. I have seen players. Where you go. The only thing I've seen this yeah. with is Deion Sanders, where 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 some of the college football Miami guys were pissed off that I'm trying to remember who the Miami player who was showed up with a Colorado hoodie on at a Dion game but that was like friends of Dion uh who did that I do not think players who went to Kentucky are gonna that's like saying somebody went to if if Kelvin Sampson went to went to I don't know Texas A&M Jamal Shedd would be at Texas A&M yes, games absolutely not Houston games Jamal Shedd I didn't say not Kentucky games I said he would absolutely support Kelvin Sampson at Texas but A&M. you can support him without having to go to a game at a, an opposing place there's plenty of U of H games I mean well, they they're, but, but they're you, not even in the same not, conference yeah. who, who but you, you guys are making it sound like they're not going to be part of Kentucky I didn't say anymore. it neither one of us said that okay so no what was said that. All right, what was said then Say it again. That, that he, they're, they're Cal guys, and they will support him at Arkansas. Sure, you can support yeah. him, but you're not going to. That's all he said. But didn't you no say, one said you have to hold turn on. and knife everyone read, in Kentucky. Hold on. Read what you read what you said. Read what the comment was. It was something about losing Kentucky, losing these players. That's not going to happen. I didn't. Who said losing these players? What was the comment? that? How did this come up? This came up in, in that, 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 uh, that Cal, that, that whoever the coach is going to be at Kentucky, He's not going to be able to get players like Cal did, first of all. And those well, players that, that were with Cal, those players that were w- w- with Cal will still support Cal. Well, you can support your coach, yeah. but support your coach. It's not going to – who cares if you support the Poison Coach? What, is, what difference does that make? Well, no, that, they'll, that they're st- definitely behind Cal because – well, I think they're, they're saying something to the effect of that Cal – made Kentucky bigger. But that's my question. If you're yeah. asking that they won't be part of Kentucky. I don't know where they will. Well, but my point, that's what I was talking well, Ke- about. My thing is they're not going to all of a sudden be out on Kentucky. I really don't think that's going to be the case. That's a special basketball school. They I, may not be playing great now. It's got a lot of history. It means way more than the football team. It's a really big deal there. Yeah. It, it's really big deal. If you are a potential pro prospect who's in high school, and Cal brings in Carl Anthony Towns or Tyrese Maxey and goes, look what Cal did for me. You should go to Arkansas. You should I'm probably go to Arkansas. I'm if telling KAT you. If KAT does that, that's that's foul. For you to help him recruit a different school you in the SEC. Think that has happened before. That's, that's foul. Happen I'm just again. telling you. And if it's happened before, it's foul. You don't do that. You you got your college you went to. Unless you're really pissed off and no, you left on bad terms. if a player asks you what Cal did for you, you tell him. You be honest. I mean, you don't have to push him to yeah. Arkansas, but just tell him the truth. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that'll happen. But I don't think Cal would put a player in that spot. Oh, I do. I think he'll I have, he, do. he will have the faces of those yeah. first-rounders all around that program. His office is going to be full of all their No, jerseys. no, no, you, as it should be. Yeah. That's how you recruit is you yeah. show all that. What you don't do is ask Carl Tan- Anthony Towns to come on and try to help you secure a prospect at Arkansas that Kentucky may be recruiting. At that that would not be a good look for any player who wants well, to. I wouldn't want Jamal Shedd doing it. It's the SEC and recruiting. I don't know why we think fair and ba- fair is going to be. Well, a I don't thing. know why we think the players have no no boundaries where they say, "Nah, this is." And I think I don't think Cal would ask. Cal a guy shows to do up that. at the though he's always at the draft. He's always with them, and part of the selling that's thing fine, for Kentucky was, "Hey, I get these guys to league. I want them to go to league. They Kentucky. can leave as soon as." No, part of the selling thing for Cal, Kentucky was, "I my guys go to the league. We right. have all these first rounders. This is what I do." And he and he says, "Hey guys, we love. I love that you were here, but go to the draft." I've never that's, heard. That's I never once heard of uh, Derek Rose going to Kentucky stuff or backing or helping recruit guys to Kentucky never once he was a Memphis guy that's what I'm saying I just think that's I think that's uh, we're arguing something that's hypothetical and all that stuff now do I think that Cal will use it well you have to that's your whole legacy is Memphis and Kentucky why would you not have pictures of Derrick Rose and because frankly every NFL I mean every college coach has that every college coach has pictures oh absolutely of of guys that they've yeah every single one of them and you should because a you're close to them and then B, I guarantee you, Dana has a bunch of stuff of 
West Virginia guys yes. and probably Wes Welker and stuff did. like that. Yeah, absolutely did. that's that's not that's totally normal. I think actively asking a blue blood first round pick to help you with a recruit to another school. I, I just I'd be a little hesitant to do put a guy in that spot if I were Cal. Well, that's Derek, all I'm saying. Well, Derek Rose is probably a poor example because he didn't even like Coach Cal. So he almost left Memphis because he hated Coach Cal. So that wouldn't be one guy. Maybe these other guys hate Coach well, Cal. We'll see. John Wall is close to death, probably. He's not close to death. <laughs> what do you mean? What are you talking well, I mean, about? He's, has anyone seen t- John Wall lately? Yes, I've seen him on podcasts all the time. His knees are terrible. He can't play basketball. That doesn't make sure you – that doesn't kill you. Well, he's close to basketball career death. Well, is he still well, getting a paycheck? He's got a podcast that he – He's on a lot. Talks he, about – He's got a podcast. Is he on with Gilbert Arenas? Oh, man. Gilbert Arenas is becoming he, quickly – if he and Emmanuel Acho did a show together, well, it might be the worst takes in history. Yeah, well, Gilbert Arenas is – I don't think he he's likes so white people flag- that much. No, he's not a white person. He's, not, a, he's, not, he's not an ally, Del. No. Ally to white people? He basically, he basically, without saying it, just said, if you're a white MVP, you just don't mean that you don't, much. You're, you're, I, mean, I mean, he thinks let's... that – he thinks that he, he can't stand he, – he openly hates – when white people succeed, <laughs> and one of them, when I say white people, international white people in basketball. Well, no, I think I don't think he's ever badmouthed Larry Bird. He probably did to friends, but um, it's about Jokic, right? You're talking about Jokic, the stuff he said recently oh, yeah. about Jokic, right? But there's he didn't like. I don't think he liked Caitlin Clark either. That you're not no. supposed to like. Yeah, no, he's pretty he much. If you're white, you can't. Yeah, he you, doesn't really hide it too much. No, no. I mean, I think that's kind of racist, don't you guys? Oh yeah, but it's what fine. to not like white people? white people? Yeah, to not like I mean, somebody because of the color the here again. Somebody because of the color of their skin is pretty much yes. that's I would textbook. I think that's the definition of racism. Certainly he's discrimination. Borderline. He's at least a bigot. Yeah, I just don't think that's right. Okay, Whitey's taking another L. Here. I don't, well, because Gilbert Arenas doesn't like you. No, that's, that's an almost L? a W. It's not an L. We're glad Gilbert. <laughs> Gilbert doesn't like people who are good. Uh, wait. He doesn't like good people either? Well, good, but no, talented people. Oh. Well, he likes some talented people. I don't, yeah. yeah. I don't, he doesn't I, like as long others. As skin tone he is, doesn't like the would he others. Would like me, though? No, um, nah, he wouldn't like you. For sure wouldn't like you. Wouldn't like, I don't think you should place your value on what Gilbert Arenas thinks. Yeah. You should, no, you, you'll I'd be okay right. if he doesn't I just like you. I just hate seeing Whitey take Do another Do you think L? John Wall is still under contract? Yes or no? Do, yes. Doesn't, isn't he on... Memphis, or is he someplace else? Or Minnesota, or is he John right now? Wall? Oh, not. Uh, I'm thinking about Derrick Rose. I don't know. John, John Wall, Wall is no longer well, under contract. Well, what? No. Well, no, he's not under contract. It officially ended. Uh, his 2022-2023 contract, which was six million a year, officially ended. His contract That's before that was the four-year, forty-two million dollars a year contract. Um, how that. old is John Wall? In I your hate estimation? That for him. Without thinking about it, you don't get to answer this, Dale. How old is John 36. Wall? 33. 33. Way younger than you think, <laughs> yeah, isn't he? Yeah. This is the oldest 33 year old in history. Yeah. He's uh, got he's got knees in the back like Tiger Woods. What about uh what about all state signing? Does he have that? No, I don't know. He should. I mean, he's got uh, the money to do it, and even if he didn't, he would have financing available. They do same as cash. Uh, um, uh, no, well, they do no interest payments for X amount of months. Ask them about their financing for windows and for siding. Did you know when you get a complete siding job, they take off a bunch on a complete siding job, a giant chunk of siding. Let me let me specify siding instead of windows. Windows are great. Go to the website. They're the best at windows. But siding is incredible because I had them come in and do siding on both sides of my home. And they were uh, fantastic. I had this vinyl siding before. It was, we got all messed up and jacked up uh, during one of our hurricanes. And my home insurance company said, we're not going to insure the home until that gets fixed. I had Allstate come out there. Very, very efficient, very, very clean workspace, which is important to me. They got the job done that day, and it looked awesome. There's no more painting. We've never had to paint anything, never even had to press or wash it, to be honest with you. It beautifies your home. And it really adds a level of not just uh, uh, does it look good, but it becomes more energy efficient as well. And you never have to mess with it again. No more painting, no more fixing wood that begins to rot. That's not the case when you have the hardy plank from all state windows and siding. Great windows, great siding, great prices and discounts. When you mention you've heard about it from ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. 
It's Allstate Windows and Siding.com. Time to uh, talk about Brinkman, okay? Listen, I don't know what you've been doing with your roof. Brinkman Quality Roofing is the place to go to get your... If you have to replace a roof, let me let me just... Put, listen, if you get the solar shingles, okay, they're going to be a little bit more expensive now. But what you save, and especially if you're going to be in this house long term... What you save, and it's not the big glass that you put on the top of your roof anymore. That's not that's not really it's it's kind of ugly. These are shingles, okay, that you put on. You are gonna save so much money. You've got the government that's helping you out on this thing. You've got the electricity bills that just I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It is going to save you money. So if you have to replace your roof, go to Brinkman because they've got these shingles. The solar sh shingles that are, it, it's its mind-boggling. It is the future. And you, ca you can get in on it now. And Brinkman Roofing is the place to go to get this done. It, Jason has been doing this. I mean, they've been in business for 50 years. There's a reason that you stay in business for 50 years because quality is in your name. BrinkmanQuality.com. That's where you're going to find the best roofs. BrinkmanQuality.com. Tell Jason that you heard it right here. And if you're in the market, for whatever kind of roof that you're going to get, at least check out the solar roofing because these the shingles, because they're, they're, I'm telling you, they're, it's revolutionary and you are going to love it. BrinkmanQuality.com. You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. All right, 922 ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Just a couple of segments left here in the show. Astros lose again. Rockets lose again. The It just is it just is getting maddening. The Rangers are here. How about this? Rangers and Braves, the next two at Minute Maid, Jeez. where you can't win already. Jeez, could this get ugly in a hurry? Well, I tell these first twenty games were going to be tough. You said you would take. I would have taken. it. Oh, you would take 10, ten and ten now. You got to win six straight over no, these I two was teams take to go 10, ten and 10. ten. Right now, I just want to avoid. Like, would you take six and fourteen? Six and fourteen. Right now, you're four and ten. No, what? Well, you don't want to, but you would you take you, it? No, I want to win these series. Would you take it if you said that? Well, I want to no, I want to be 
I want to win. I want to be eight and twelve. Well, yeah, of eight course. And 14, eight and fourteen. Eight and twelve. When this is over, when these twenty games is over, eight and twelve. Okay. Um, so that means you win four out of these six. Yeah, and that's reasonable. That's reasonable. But if somebody told you, okay, we will give you, we will give you seven and thirteen, and you can take it right now, or would you like to play behind what's behind door number two, which is six actual games played with Astros starting pitching and bullpen? <laughs> what would you take, the three and three, or would you would you let Wayne Brady? Keep no, that three, three and three. three. Right I'll take three and three right now. Three. I would too. I'll take three. I don't want to play with for what's play. behind no. door two, no. which is actual baseball games with Astros pitching. Yeah, I take I take the three and three. In fact, if you let me sim games right now, I'd rather simulate games for maybe just the next eight until Justin gets back. Just let me sim the games. That's fine. It gives me a better chance to win. I think. I, oh, it absolutely does yeah. with this pitching. Oh, it absolutely does. Yeah. Well, although. If it if it if it's simming with this current Astros and these current pitchers, then I don't think it's going to sim well. No, but you're, it's also not going to. Well, it depends on how accurate the simulation is. Yeah, I mean, what I'm hoping for is they go. Well, it's still ju- it's still Hunter Brown. Like it's still it's still Hunter. I don't want it to just use this year's stats in the simulation. <laughs> well, the, last year's. Is it going to be much better? I'd rather have last year's. Okay, Hunter everybody Brown. would like have last who. Year. I mean, this is. It went from good to below average to terrible. What do you do? That pathway is not advisable. Exactly. What exactly? What do you do now with Hunter? I think you're going to have to. We're getting. If he has one more rocky outing, I think you almost. So you want him to. You don't want him to lose confidence, but it's probably too late for that. Uh, you got to get figured out. Is he tipping pitches? I think that's a realistic question that you have to look for. Talking to Roger Clemens, you know the first thing that happens when we talk to Roger Clemens. I find out how easy it is for pitchers to tip pitches. It's incredible yeah. how much we learn that pitchers have to like change things every and be looking, scouting themselves every, and other pitchers have to scout them to make sure they're not tipping pitches. It's unbelievable. So, I think there's a really good chance that he's tipping pitches based on. I mean, this is this is position player stats. Hunter Brown has position player pitching stats. <laughs> Like if 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 Dubon came in to throw, that's what his stats are: nine runs and two thirds of an inning. That's that, that that's not real pitcher stats. That's position player stats. So you know who are coming in to pitch. So I think that there's a good chance he's tipping something. You got to find that. You got to find out. You know, obviously he has to stop finding so much of the plate. But the other thing is work on. Is there anything technically that needs working on? Is this his mentality? Does he need to go spend? You know, does he need to go get a minor league start? I mean, this can't be about ego. This has to be about doing what's best to resurrect Hunter Brown because right now his confidence has to be in the toilet. There's no way any pitcher's mentally tough enough not to have doubt after after last year and the way he opened up this year. There's no way. It's impossible to do what he's done the last two, you know, the last two two games and and think that everything's fine. So how do you handle him? Do you put him in the bullpen and use him sparingly? That might be a good way. Just have him try to, but he's having a hard time getting out of an inning anyway. But w- I, I would rather see Hunter Brown in a five to one game where the Astros have the lead, come in on a in a game like that and try to get three outs. And if you get in trouble, pull him, because right now you can't when he's a starter. You can't afford to just eat up that many relievers. If he walks this first batter or the second batter gets a hit. You give him one more batter, and if it's no good, you go back to the pen and you say, damn, another bad performance by Hunter Brown. But what else can you do? Do you how send him to the times, minors? How many more times if he can? T- I give him one more. That's it. No. You can't. No, I give him one more before I move him to the pen. I, 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 you can, okay. One Shouldn't more Verlander before. be back by then? Hopefully. Well, he's got a start in Albuquerque. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if he doesn't get lit up again. <laughs> well, we'll just tell ourselves he's just working on stuff, and maybe Hunter's just working on stuff. No, Hunter, this is not a time to be work. Just working on stuff. It's April baseball doesn't matter. You know that. <laughs> it kind of does. September it baseball say, matters. Dang. Early season baseball. Relax. You're always told that April baseball doesn't really mean that much. You don't just work on stuff during the regular season. I'm just working some stuff out here. Maybe Hunter is working out a slider. He's just. 
he didn't get enough time in in preseason. Maybe the spring training didn't get enough time, and maybe he's just working on something. No, he he had plenty of time. I'm pretty sure he was ready. He knew when the season was going to start. I'm pretty sure. I'm almost positive. He well, if he's known. working on something, I'd like for him to stop. Mm hmm. Um, and start trying to get but, people out. Well, don't don't work on that curveball. And Justin, anymore. hey Justin, I know last game maybe you were working on something. This game, let's let's change things up and let's get people out, and not give up a bunch of hits and runs. I want Verlander to get people out this time. Um, yeah. That, don't work on stuff. Just get guys <laughs> just out. Just get guys out. Try to get some guys out. We need you in Albuquerque. We really need you. And what's up with Fr Fromber? You heard anything lately with Fromber? We won't hear anything. What's the latest on Arcidi? Is he coming back next week? <laughs> Arcidi. Have you heard anything on Arcidi? Not, Ar Not one thing. No. I don't think they give Arcidi updates anymore. You know what this feels like where they want, they just kept Lance McCullers out and they just yeah. kept waiting to waiting to see if it got better and it eventually being surgery out. Yeah, I'm not. The thought was he was just, Arcidi was just going to be a few weeks and I don't, I don't know that I'm, I don't feel like well, you, can, you can count on him this year, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, 929 ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. 713-780-3776. Get in here because we got one segment left this week. After that, we got News of the Weird and then bye-bye. And then the Mopey and Mape show. But I got to talk right now about my favorite coffee. I love, I love the Texas Pecan at Free Rain Coffee. Free Rain Coffee is just, it just hits different people. I'm telling you. All right. You sleep, you wake you free reign, you work, and repeat. Let's go. And it, for, I'm telling you, free reign, it, it just, it does. It just is different than any other coffee I've ever had. Fuller flavor. It's get up and get after it. Dream coffee, work, repeat. Dream coffee, work, repeat. And let's, I like to play it. I like to throw play in there a little bit because I, I do. I, but I'm working my ass off here. I, I drink my free rank coffee, work my ass off here, and then I play hard, though. Then I play then I play hard as well. It's the way to do it. Get up and get after it. Free Rain has been doing it for 25 years. It's in San Angelo. We're talking Texas here. We're talking America here. Okay? That's what we're talking about with coffee. Cole Hauser drinks it. That's then you should, okay? Started this deal. Cole Hauser did rip uh, from Yellowstone. You got American dirt. Uh, which is a, if, if you love a French roast, this is your brew. Eric McBlend with the Homestead. You've got a Colombian coffee with Mustano, but it's all ground and delivered right out of San Angelo. 975coffee.com. Let's go. ESPN 20 for 20% off. Put in promo code ESPN 20 for 20% off at 975coffee.com.
Gulf Coast Chevy Buick GMC has got a lot of trucks. Truck month. They've got some. They've got great finance rates going on right now in the Chevy Silverado 1500s, uh, the 2023s and 2024s. It's a great pickup truck. Great interior. Obviously, the carry the carriage space is fantastic. More and more people are moving from big SUVs to trucks because they're just as nice. A lot of uh, really great um, um, interior features. So the interior feels just like an SUV. They got a lot of space in the back seat, enough to carry three more people. So you got it's gonna it's gonna be a five seater with cargo space. And you know, for a lot of us, once the kids move out and you start thinking, man. Do I need this big an SUV? Wouldn't I love to have enough for five and then the ability to carry things around when I want to? Absolutely. And that's what that offers you with Silverado. Same thing with GMC Sierra pickup truck. For those of you who love pickup trucks, you've always had them. You know how cool the grills are, how cool the, the external features are on the GMC Sierra pickup truck. That one's waiting for you as well. Gulf Coast Chevy is going to make the best deals for you. They give you the highest trade-in values. And, of course, the, se the selection and the service is top notch. They win awards year after year after year for service. It's Gulf Coast Chevy Buick GMC. Shop online, at least start the car buying experience at LanceZcars.com. You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. All right, welcome back. This is our final segment of the week. So, what did we miss this week? Um, what we missed today with new intel here that came out. We, I just hadn't seen this one. Jose Arquiti is quote quote really close to getting off a mound. In other words, uh, throwing a bullpen session. He's really close. Joe Espada said Justin Verlander remains on track to make a second rehab start this weekend. Framber Valdez is feeling better and could resume playing catch in the next few days, according to Joe Espada, manager. That's good. He's going to play catch. What, what? No, I'm being serious. That's these. This is. Why are you covering your eyes? This well, is not. Robert's a nine year old, and his dad's back in town. He's going to play catch with his dad in a couple he's of days. Ready to play some <laughs> catch. catch. He's a major league oh, pitcher. He's going to be ready to play some catch in a couple. Well, he's got to be oh. able to throw. Now that's. Do you know good. how long it takes after you start to play catch to pitch in the big well, he leagues? Just pitched. Then he's got rehab starts. No, we don't know that. With no, 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 no. I'm talking about. Who Fromber? are you talking about? Fromber? Rehab yeah, starts. Oh, Urquidy, too, by the way. Oh, he's ready to maybe throw off a mound? He's getting he's getting close to oh, throwing off a mound. Oh, he's getting close to it. That one's well, gonna... now there's a... Let me awesome. tell you something. By June, you could end up getting Urquidy, Garcia, and McCullers By back. June? <laughs> yeah. so you got Spencer, Eric Getty, and Hunter Brown, and Blaine Witchcraft for... Hindley. What? It's and endless. you got this is what you got for until June. JP France. Oh, great. Renel uh, Blanco. He, I know. I like how you're. I like how you're passing up on the aces. Renel Blanco is actually the ace of the staff. He is the ace. He's of the, the undisputed he's the ace of the staff. He's definitely the stopper. He's the stopper. You have JP France who has an ERA below four point one six. Joe Espada is the single mom promising that uh, things will get better. Look, dad's your your dad's gonna be here this time. Oh, 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 so I can play catch? Is that what, what? What are we doing? You, oh. you don't want to play catch with me. No, Dad's going to be here, so I just gave you guys we can play catch. News. He never even pays attention to me when he comes over. <laughs> Close to bullpen session, going to make second start, Justin Verlander. And, Cl and Fromber's play getting close to you playing You just catch. spent the last segment talking about how you want F Justin Verlander to actually get out this time, and you feel great about a second rehab start? I'm, after hearing Espada talk, I feel better. This is No, they could be 4-30. and 30. Joe Espada's got real single mom energy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Here's oh. something else we didn't talk about. There's some guy with face tattoos and neck tattoos, extremely successful, John who cuts hair and has his own podcast that Tom Brady's on. It's called Cutting Edge or something like that. I guess the popular podcast where the he barber... Cuts Tom Brady's hair? Yeah. Face, who's cut, what's his podcast? He's, he's, he's... Yeah, oh, yeah. Neck tattoo, face tattoo. Yeah. yeah. Successful, in other words. Mm -hmm. And he was... Um, and it, it, this goes back to an argument we had yesterday about whether or not you could have... I believe that neck tattoos... You can be successful in a lot of things with neck, neck tattoos. I do think face tattoos is like... Cutting hair, yeah. Yeah, cutting hair, yeah. Creati creative, on the creative side of yeah. things, yes. Things that involve math, maybe not as much your public 
being the public face in sales. <laughs> Maybe not as much on a corporate side. But anyway, so he was on this guy's podcast. And Tom Brady, I don't know if you caught this or not, yeah. and I wonder if he's trolling. Tom Brady said he's not opposed to, he goes, I'm not opposed to it about coming back. Deep Cut is the podcast. I'm not opposed to it. I don't know if they're going to let me if I become an NFL, an owner of an NFL team. I'm always going to be in good shape. I'll always be able to throw the ball. So to come back for a little bit like MJ coming back, I don't know if they would let me, but it, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Um, then Blends, the guy's name, proposed a scenario where the 49ers might need a quarterback headed into the playoffs. And then Brady also mentioned New England Patriots and Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, yeah, because are, the Patriots are probably going to be right there for the Super Bowl. Well, what that would be, you know what that, that would really be is a shot at Bill Belichick. For you to come back to a team that's not going to be a good football team yeah, but you, and come. Now, it also might be a chance for him to just say, hey, one last hurrah to the Patriots fans I love. Maybe after playing for Tampa, he just, man, really missed New England and the fans. It could just be, on one sense, it could be like, Bill Belichick, I'm going to, you yeah. know, I'm going to show you. I'm going to go play for a team that's no good. But on the other hand, it could have just also be, instead of signing the, the, the one-day contract to retire a, a Patriot. Well, this would allow him to retire a Patriot. That's it. So I could, I actually could see that. Well, you he, you think he'd take a few snaps though? He's gonna go. I would say if he's gonna retire, just a ceremonial. I'm signing a one day contract. He doesn't I strike. He's see. got Tiger Woods energy. He's not gonna do that. The the he'd Raiders to go play. too. The Raiders. The Raiders well, only because he may be an owner there. Yeah. Well, oh, I guess before he signs, they don't need any help though. That team is like you. You you put a team in 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 Las Vegas and you're successful. Period. You don't need Tom Brady to pr promote your team because the opposing team is going to show up there. You will never have a ticket that won't be sold at a Raider game because the opposing team will buy them up because they, that's the trip that their 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 fans are going to go on. Oh, we're playing at the Raiders this year. Sweet! I can't wait till the Texans play at the Raiders because that'll that'll be sweet. Go to Vegas mm -hmm. and even if you don't even go to the game. Your fans, your fans are going to be filling up. They'll be in all the casinos, uh, tech, and especially Texans fans with that gear. It's the best. That's the best. Well, it's going to be new gear. It is going to be new gear. No, I, 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 if it's if they're wearing that blue with the red helmet, I'm telling you, that's fire. But as far as Tom Brady is concerned, I like NFL to spit coach. in his mouth while he sleeps. That ain't Tom Brady. That was um, no. That's my response to his nonsense. Shut up, Tom Brady. Just up. go away. It, it, what are we well, doing? Well, that was he, my other thing. Did he just say that to get people yes, all antsy? Of yes. course. To, the, to, like Tom Brady needs attention. What are you doing, but, Tom? Yeah, you're you're not gonna come back and play a couple games, inconsequential games. Stop it. What about Patriots though? As a for what? As a farewell? He's gonna play yeah. a couple games to throw to Kendrick Bourne. Yeah. What and what if he and what if he, Tom just can't quit football. I really think that, I really I, I wonder if he can because, I do think he would go out there and try to perform. He's not going to embarrass himself. We no, know that. he's not going to. If he him. thinks he can't do it, it would be one of those take a snap and take a knee and then wave to everybody in New England. Oh, I can, he could still throw passes. Yes, he can. Yeah. Oh, but he's lost all his mobility. What? What? <laughs> exactly. It was never his it's game. Not a question of could it he never do his game. it? Why? Who would be better, Tom Brady or or or, or uh, Tom Brady or Drake May or? We're not doing this thing where we yeah, where okay. we pretend like he wouldn't be capable. I'm saying, okay. why is he doing it? For what reason? Well, it could be just to retire a Patriot. You can sign the one day contract. Well, nah. Why, why don't we get a couple snaps in? Who's what? mentioning the Raiders? And throw a in touchdown. This. Who mentioned the Raiders in this? The story Tom did. or Tom Brady? Tom did. Tom mentioned the Raiders. If, if I'm the opponent and, I, and Tom Brady rolls out there for a couple snaps, I'm treating him like a make-a-wish kid. We're just going to lay down and let you do it. The Patriots treat, treat him like I'm the, the opponent. Uh, I mean, the opponent. Because if you're you, going to come out here for – Oh, you're going to try to embarrass him? Yeah, for the fanfare. Okay, hey, that, everyone, that get out of the way. Tom the Brady. Exactly. Don't come out here for your own amusement. I'm if just going to let you do it. Treat him like a make-a-wish kid is one of the worst things that you – low-key one of the worst <laughs> things you've said. I'm treating – look, Tom, you're not going to come out here for, for the – for the love of the game and and take a couple snaps. And you're gonna embarrass We're him gonna by embarrass just laying you. down because he would be so mad. I know this is what I, this is what I'm doing. Can you imagine people just clearing the lane and letting Michael Jordan get a dunk? You'd be furious. Oh my god! Immediately throw the ball in your no, face. No, if they all did go, if if it's a, a blowout game, 
and just let like them the one lay kid down. in high school that they let score who's blind. Yeah. And everyone's Look, diving and missing if their Tom Brady's, if they if Tom Brady's rolling up in week 18 just to get a couple snaps or a higher page, I would definitely instruct my team to just let him score. Well, you have no respect for the GOAT. Yeah, I don't. You have no this, respect for Tom Brady. Particularly in this instance. And you know why? It's because you're an AFC East guy, and you have no respect for the guy that ripped your ass out every year. Not in Miami. And that's wow. odd phrasing, by the way. That's terrible phrasing. That's awful phrasing. Can we look, not say look, that Tom, again? We're not going to show. show. Yeah, please don't. We're not going to showcase you on my time. We're, if you come out here, you're getting. You're not going to embarrass us. We're embarrassing you. Hmm. Oh, look at the old guy. Let's 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 clap it up for him while he's tossing passes to to Kendrick Bourne and whoever, whatever rookie wide receiver they have out there. Hey, we're going to do this whole. We're going to treat it like the Pro Bowl used to before they went to flag football. We're going to pretend to rush. We're going to pretend to cover. No, and, and because that looks like you might be doing it. If you everybody just took a knee. No, you can. If you stand up at the Alliance scrimmage, the Pro Bowl style. Yeah. That's pretty embarrassing. Tom, don't embarrass Tom Brady. Like I that. would. Don't have me as the coach if he's coming out for a week for a game. The coach most likely to do that would be like Mike Vrabel, and he's not a head coach anymore. Unfortunately. Who's the head coach that's most likely to do something like that? Get pissed off at Tom Brady. Not Mike McDaniel would. Would Antonio do it. Pierce do it? Would Salah do it? Robert Salah, I mean. Antonio Pierce, no, no, because he's, he's Raiders. A, you can't do that. We got to compete. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, he may be an owner, someone's part been, owner of the Raiders. Someone oh, who's vindictive Lions. like me. Dan, Dan Campbell? Campbell, the Campbell. bite the kneecap guy? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, no, Kevin O'Connell would. Stuff. Nobody has that kind of energy like Bruce Arians might have. No, Bruce Arians had him. Uh, I can't think of anybody. Tom that Brady's had. not having a a farewell on my on my time. That's all I'm saying. I mean, Bill Belichick would do that. Yes, he might do that. Let him score. No, make it obvious. We're going to let him score. Yeah. No, you got to make it obvious. Yeah. I mean, fall down, <laughs> like lay down. <laughs> uh, John, I can't John, believe you. You guys are trying to embarrass our goat. Yes, he's trying to embarrass us. Yeah, he's embarrassing himself. Just stop, Tom Brady, and stop trying to get attention. I mean, come on. Well, you're Tom Brady. Scotty Scheffler's pretty good. You think? Everyone else, I almost text you like, these golfers are terrible. John was on the Ron back sucked. nine. Everyone was John sucking Ron was yesterday. John Ron was under, and he bo- bo- bogey, bogey. He suck. Um, this it. has already turned out to be a disastrous Masters. No, it's going to be What will have more ratings, Masters or Caitlin Clark's finals? Caitlin Clark's game against LSU. Oh. It's not even close. Against LSU. Caitlin Clark. Tigers play at the Masters. It doesn't matter. Tigers. What if Tigers... And, well, if he's in contention, now we got to And Caitlin Clark was on ESPN. Tiger in contention or Caitlin Clark? On Saturday and Sunday. And I didn't say Caitlin Clark championship CBS. game. Tiger couldn't possibly compete with Ta- Caitlin Clark championship game. We're talking about Caitlin Clark versus LSU. Uh, versus Tiger in contention at the Masters. Oh, uh, that would be... That's going to be close. That's going to be close. What is that? Does that CBS on a Sunday Does that afternoon. say anything about golf? I know. Yeah. That should help. Yeah. Does that say anything about golfers to say something about Caitlin, Caitlin Clark? Clark? I looked at the college, men's college basketball. I was looking at the TV ratings. Holy crap. They used to be 23. It, this year it was 14. It, it hasn't been 20 for a little bit, but it'll be. It was 21, then 24, 28 million. The highest was 34 million ever, Bird versus Magic. But they've been in the high 20s, yeah. and now it's 14 million. Yeah. Well, it's because no names. You, know, you don't know anybody. Yeah. You know John Daspit, though. I do. John Daspit is. I was talking to uh, someone yesterday, my man Sean, about John Daspit, and he was commenting on how he sees John Daspit's name all over high school stadiums. And John is a big supporter of high school athletics as well. Um, he puts his name out there and, and and spends money to do a lot for high school athletics. Is big into his particular district where he went to school. But he's involved in nil for players he's involved on the collegiate level he's involved with turkey with thanksgiving dinners and bike drops does a lot of stuff with selvin young for churches um he does give back to the community it's the same community that he serves when it comes to personal injury and he's a personal injury lawyer that's not doing a crazy tv commercials and not making outlandish claims and i heard one guy the other day tell you to get into a wreck so you can make millions i mean just some of these guys are not really great people. John Daspit is here to give you legitimate representation to go over everything that you need to have. They they turn over every stone 
and they give you the representation that you deserve and get you the settlements that you deserve as well for being injured due to someone else's negligence. You're not going to pay for hospital bills. You're not going to pay for time missed from work. You're going to get compensated for that and for your pain and suffering. John Daspit will make sure. And if it goes to court, you don't want to see his they don't want to see his winning percentage because he gets W's left and right. It's John Daspin, the Daspin Law Firm. Call 713. Call now. We're heading into tax weekend, right? Okay, so you got to get those taxes done. This is the, the end of it. How difficult has it been for your business? How difficult has it been for you to get all that information together? How difficult has it been to figure it out? How difficult is the Affordable Care Act? All of these things are kind of a big deal, and HRMP does all that for us. HRMP is perfect. HRMP, it makes it seamless, makes it easy. They're experts in the Affordable Care Act. They're experts at payroll. It doesn't matter what kind of payroll that you have. Okay, HRMP is going to do it. They're going to do it perfectly. The technology is second to none. HR as well. They're experts in the HR field. You're not. You sell your widgets. You sell your services. I don't know what you do for a living, but whatever you do, your business, you're not in the payroll business or the HR business or in the tax business. You, my friends, do what you do. Let HRP do what they do and help you and do it more economically for you. All you need to do is go to hrp.net, 281-880-6525 or hrp.net. All right, so we had the police blotter for the athletes. Here's the news of the weird police blotter. Thieves in Southern California are stealing streetlight poles. Wait, what? Apparently for the, from the 1920s, streetlight poles in Southern, in Pasadena, and their thieves are stealing streetlight. Where, where do you sell streetlights? Well, it's got to be for metal, right? I guess something just like, just like the, you still the, what is it the the stuff under the cars, the catalytic, catalytic converters, converters, the yeah. copper, yeah, the meth. A lot of times, meth heads. Maybe How the about meth this? heads are the ones that steal a lot. Probably of stuff. four arrested for four people have been arrested for grand theft of three hundred thousand dollars worth of cookies, Legos. Did we do this one for before? For the plastic? No. I guess this one would be for the plastic, maybe. Melt the plastic down. Well, anytime you steal a bunch of stuff, you can always resell it. 
Oh, well, here's how about this? Here's the four people Jeremy Johnson, Marta Hart, Chung Pei Yu, and Shen Li. Why did you mention who they were? But I'm just saying. Martha I don't, Johnson? Why in the world would you want $300,000 worth of Legos? Steal something easier. How about this man? Ohio man steals thousand dollars, thousands of dollars in cigarettes from a convenience store. What is this, Goodfellas? I mean, is anyone moving cigarettes, moving that weight anymore? Ooh, we got, we had the bank robbers here, the youngsters that were robbing the bank. How about a twelve? The ra- year old? weren't they called little rascals? Little little rascals. Yeah. We got another one, a twelve-year-old armed, a twelve-year-old armed, uh, an armed twelve-year-old attempted a uh, McDonald's robbery. Okay, this isn't going to be popular for some people, but if you so he got caught, right? Mm-hmm. Is the move just to take the gun away and bring him into a room and put him over somebody's lap and just spank him? Do you think that he should just be slapped? No, spanked. Spanked. Yeah, not slapped in the slapped. face. Slapped. Well, you could slap him in the face too. That hurts. No, but I'm asking specifically. Should you just spank him? Yeah. Mm. Should well, he get a spank? It's more than he's going to get. He's 12 years old. What are you going to do? I know. What's right? he going to go to juvie? Become a Florida jit? <laughs> jit is a term that I learned watching YouTube. Yeah, a it's pe- a juvie in Florida. It is. It's a juvie. Yeah. That's it. That's it. young jit. My kids call me a jit now. They do. Because Lamar Jackson called them jits whenever uh, he retweeted the picture of my sons playing basketball, fighting each other. He goes, "Look at them jits." And so I had to tell them, Lamar called you a jit. Do you know what that means? Well, it's a juvenile in Florida, but usually in juvenile detention facilities. But he's so now Alec just calls me, "What's up, jit?" So now I'm called a jit. You ain't a jit, I'm not though. a jit. I don't know. I don't know juvenile. why he calls me a jit. Um, I mean, okay, but you're not a jit. I'm not a jit. Okay. So uh, what else? Oh, how about, well, we got time for one more. Yeah. How about in Vietnam? Is this a more crime? Billionaire, a billionaire fraud case. The bi- The biggest trial in Vietnam history. By the way, it's a yeah, it's a communist nation, and they don't really let their stuff out. Uh, she was sentenced. She was sentenced to the to death for 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 fraud, in which she and listen to this. There were twenty seven hundred people who testified in this case. Twenty seven hundred state prosecutors, two hundred lawyers involved. What is what did she steal? She stole from a bank over eleven years. She stole forty four billion dollars. You think they would have found Whoa, out? Whoa! What, what? Well, forty four billion. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Not dollars. Well, it's probably about. There's no 30, way it equaled that. It's dollars. Probably thirty seven cents. But it's eleven years. Okay, that she stole forty four b of whatever their money is. And what was the uh, what, is what Vietnam, country? Vietnamese money worth? Does Vietnamese mm, can't be great. Can't be not. It's not gonna be that. Great. I'm gonna find out how much. How much did she? S- Vietnamese currency. I have to know this. Yes, now. you have to know. Forty four B she v- stole. Vietnamese okay, Vietnamese currency to US dollars. The Vietnamese dong. Okay. Forty four billion dong. Don't say anything. Okay. Let's just see. Forty four billion dong. dong. What's that worth, Lance? Forty four million and we go bomb bomb bomb. She stole uh one point seven five million. 44B is 1.75 million. Doesn't seem yeah, like she it's stole 1.75 million. Well, she got she got the death sentence for it. Well, then what's going to happen with Epe? Okay, what? What? He's being charged with 60 million dollars oh, yeah. in U.S. Oh no, no, he's probably going to be out in three years. Okay, that's the way we go about it. Hold on, I'm going to do 60. One, no, two, no, three, we four. Get, we usually get white, white, uh, white crime. What, white, white collar crime. White collar crime. Oh well, my god! On what you look he like. He stole like a. He stole fifteen trillion dollars worth all? of dong. He stole, Ipe did. He stole fifteen trillion dong, though. <laughs> I get it. I heard you. I understand. That's a lot. Can, is that even possible? How, where are you gonna I, I would know. never steal dong. Where are you going right. to store all I'm gonna of it? I'm going to keep my hands to myself and know. leave your dong alone. I'm not many, taking any. How many? I'm not taking any from the bank. I'm not going to touch anyone's dong. That's your dong. It's not mine, and I'll keep my hands to myself. 
and see, let the, you have your dong. See, the hands to yourself thing is mm-hmm. putting it over the top. I think if you just kept talking about the bank, you'd be fine. So we're done. No, I mean, I'm not going to put my That's hands on. End of you, the week. you said I'm not going to take any more. I'm not going to. I'm not going to take. I'm not going to touch. If you left your dong on the table, <laughs> why would I? I'm get, not touching your dong leave, if the dong's on the table. I'm not going to leave. It's that yours. Behind. I'm not touching. I don't steal. But what's it, so funny? Uh, what's what about the other problem? people's? No, other people's dong is would their you, dong. Would you take if for your if you give services to somebody? Would you take dong? <laughs> I think I, I'm not answering that even as a joke, because I'm not letting Dell tape that. <laughs> if someone wants, because what if I answered in the affirmative, <laughs> and then that's and then it's an easy cut from you to me, and that's it's just not I'm not doing Dude, that. You taking dong for your services? Go on, answer his question. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're not? Yeah, well, fine. I'll answer it. Absolutely not. <laughs> I've already told you. All right, that's it. I, I only roam with U.S. currency. That's, that's how you're it. starting your show, Dell. That's it. No, More there's, Dong there's Talk. There's like a two-minute break. That's how we're ending this week. That's nice. Uh, With Dong Talk. That's great. Well, it's a form, it's a form you think of money. Robin wants to be associated with this? No. I don't think anyone does. No one does. Okay, I don't want to be associated with this. I know Houston Powder Coaters doesn't. Houston Powder Coaters, five-star customer service. Houston Powder Coaters has been in business over 20 years. Great Google reviews. Very hands-on. You'll probably talk to Robin. Great communication with customers. She, As a matter of fact, she says she'll send her a picture of your patio furniture, your car parts, or your boat parts, and she'll tell you, no, 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 that's too rusted out. No, 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 we can't fix that. Or, yes, 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 we can do it. Okay? And then they'll pick it up. And deliver it back to you absolutely free. Doesn't matter where you are. If you can hear us, they will do it. They were all right here in Texas. If you listen on the app in New York, no. Here's the deal. If you're looking for a great way to make your stuff look new again, paint it the colors that you want. Not only paint it, but powder coat it so that it lasts and lasts and lasts. Save whatever it is that you want to save. Make it so ex- exactly the color that you want, be it your football team's colors or your baseball teams or your basketball team whatever or just regular furniture colors whatever all you need is houston powder coaters houstonpowdercoaters.com tell robin you heard it right here
We are a proper and true sports town. An ungrateful one, but a true one. When you begin to talk about firing people less than 15 games into a regular season, this is how I know this is a real sports town. And, And ungrateful, considering the level of success your baseball team has had. But that is all out the window. I always wonder how long how long it would take for people to people to not be comforted by past success. And for this Astros team and and this city, a sweep at the hands of the Royals. And everyone's had enough. Um the Astros go down again. Hunter Brown was awful again. He it's just another in a line of bad pitching performances for him and for most of the Astros, at least healthy rotation. There is always the understanding that there are plenty of guys who would be starting but aren't because they aren't available because of health issues. Now, the the McCullers thing, you kind of just push to the side. He's always in the back of your mind, but you never really consider him a guy who's going to be available. You just wait for for July and see if he's around, and then then we'll see how how good he is. But But you know, the rotation isn't what it's supposed to be, and it's wearing on people. We got pitching coaches who, who should get fired. We're wondering if we're going to DFA your first baseman. Why is a spot of pinch hitting for said first baseman? And if that's and if he has to do that, then that first baseman shouldn't even be on the roster. The other first baseman stinks. A lot of people are upset, and I don't blame you because this was supposed to be the respite until the Texans came back. Uh, you, you're supposed to have a good baseball team, and you don't. And And let's be honest. They're not a good baseball team, but they're not the Astros because they're not whole. And until that happens, you can expect for this team to be bad. The Hunter Brown thing is probably the most concerning of it all when we talk about the pitching staff. He is supposed to be the next good one. I don't know about great. The Verlander stuff is mostly cosplay at this point. Oh, he pitches. He, he looks like him when he's, when he's on the mound. So what? I've seen cosplay before. And just because you're dressed like Aragorn doesn't mean you're actually Aragorn. That's my nerd bag as far as game <laughs> Lord of the Rings is concerned. I've seen those guys. Those The guys who put on a wig and think they look like Viggo Mortensen, they don't. And just because Hunter Brown wants to pretend to be Justin Verlander doesn't mean he is. Uh, that The biggest, the, the greatest thing Hunter Brown ever did was let everyone know how, how big of a fan he was of, of Justin Verlander because now people will give him a little leeway and go, well, that's our next Verlander. Maybe he's not your next Verlander. Maybe he's just a middle-rung pitcher who is struggling right now because he's young and he's got gotten off to a bad start, and that's that's the positive spin on it because right now it's all kinds of awful, and you can say that for plenty of Astros. But they're not whole. They're losing games, and now it gets much easier because they get to come home, and that's always where you where you get where you get right right. The Astros come home. They play two good baseball teams, and at the end of the show that I was previously on the discussion was what would you take the Astros being as bad as they are would you be happy with losing two out of three to both teams and going you know what we'll take it we'll we'll take we'll take going two and two and two and four over the course of those six games as opposed to getting swept or going one and five and that's the state of some Astros fandom I know some of you are like well it's, it's early yeah, but if this and this team's not going to remain this way, particularly the pitching staff, it's early. But this iteration of the of the Astros is a bad baseball team. You can't trust their starting pitching unless their name's Ronel Blanco from from day to day. So early, but that doesn't mean that it'll get better. The get better part comes when you get your rotation back, and there's some news on that going. For, and I'll get to that. We have some reports, positive news about some guys, if you consider it positive, because it's not like they're going to be imminently on the major league roster. It's just that they're taking steps along the way and no setbacks. So I was a victim of a nap yesterday, Sean, because I we did the show out at East River nine. Good time. And I thought to myself, I'm going to get home, take a nap and then tune in to Hunter Brown. That nap got me, man. I didn't see any of the Hunter Brown performance. And it's not my fault. He only went two-thirds of an inning. I was going to say, to be fair, it's not all your It's fault. not all my fault. I expected to, you know, I didn't want to miss the start, but I expected to miss some of it. I thought maybe it's possible. I didn't set my alarm, but generally my body clock's a certain way where I know I'm going to get up in time. And so I missed part of his start, mostly because his start didn't last long. 
well, it was it felt long because he was out there and giving up runs. But as far as getting outs, he didn't do that. And um, so I can't blame myself completely for missing it. But I, but why? But maybe I, I did myself a favor. Why would I want to punish myself by watching Hunter Brown pitch? Yeah, that's one where I, I mean, I we were still at um at East River Nine, so we we're watching along as we we're doing the show. But I do feel like that's one where you could just kind of wake up, look at the ESPN app, and just go, "Huh, okay." <laughs> and I feel like you're caught up. I feel yeah. <laughs> I feel like just looking at the looking at the numbers, you're uh, you uh, you get a gist of uh, what that first inning was like. Oof, it's troublesome, um, disappointing, and it's it's it kind of stings when you know let's say 25 minutes into the game, this game's over for you. Like you can, you can try to imagine and dream and hope your offense comes through, but like how many runs had to have crossed the plate before you realize, okay, this game's over because you know, again, with Blair Henley, it was the Astros had scored two in the first inning and then he gave a five, but you, you kind of felt you're still in it. It's only five to two. If you, as long as your bullpen, which has questions could, could hold, hold the team down, you would have a shot. Was it the, what t- at what point in that first inning did you go, okay, this game's over? The fourth run, the fifth run, hey, six, how long did it take? I think it was about the fifth because you start doing the math of uh, – Hunter Brown was giving up – I think he gave up five, or five hits to the first six batters and threw 16 pitches. So there, it wasn't like Blair Henley who threw forty pitches to get one out. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hunter Brown was working fast. It was just uh, they were also just running around the bases fast on him. Uh, so that it was in a weird way, like more just like, oh my god, he has nothing for these guys today. <laughs> like he he's has, not even making them work. He, no, he's he's got nothing. But so I think that we start doing the math of, well, man, he might. I don't even know if he gets out of this inning. He didn't. He, <laughs> narr- narrator? He didn't. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. and it wasn't a workload. I mean, he probably could have kept pitching. <laughs> like, he, it, if it, they really needed uh, – because there was some talk about, well, he needs to give them at least like four or five innings just to give this bullpen uh, a rest. And then, again, 16 pitches, five hits. <laughs> Uh, Joe Sp- Joe Spada said, "Look, I could punish him and and the, all of us who are here by letting him stay out there, but at some point I got to go get him. And it's it, a day game. We all just want to go yeah, home, yeah, get out of the sun. In this, we got to end this game as soon as possible because it's already over. Hunter Brown was historic yesterday. He's the first pitcher in Major League history to allow 11 hits while pitching less than one inning. So it speaks to." It was too, it's, it was too fast. He kept giving giving up hits for they could get some guy ready to, gonna, to replace him. They're gonna warm up Seth Martinez. <laughs> yeah. By the way, if I'm Seth Martinez, I'm I'm thinking, can I just start one of these games? What's like, the point at this point? Why? I come why in gotta in the come first in. anyway? Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna pitch. I'm not gonna go more than three innings anyway. For, likely, let me come in with a clean game and see what I can do. Neither are these guys. Well, exactly. These guys aren't going three exactly. innings it's either. Not, oh, like, it's not like he he's going to come in and get a potential win unless he's remarkably efficient, but let me give the guys a chance to win a game. Let me get my three innings in, and then we'll see how the rest of the bullpen handles it. Maybe give Hunter Brown an inning. I don't know. Yeah, but, then pass the baton. Yeah, like. something, <laughs> but I got to come in with no chance, and, and the biggest goal I can achieve is keeping it Keeping the game from being completely embarrassing—that's that's my status on the roster, and um, it didn't really help. I mean, it, hey, he did his job, but did, it didn't. Help. Yeah, it, he did what he was asked of, but it didn't. But it didn't help. The Astros go down, and uh, but they are setting historic marks when it comes to their inexperienced pitching, and I can't say that it won't continue. What has Hunter Brown shown to suggest that he's going to f- dig his way out of it? It's just something you're going to have to live with until you get guys back. Uh, We're going to hear from one of the brain trusts of the Astros when we come back. Apparently, there is another former Astros star who is in on on the decision-making. Reggie Jackson talked to John Heyman. Reggie Jackson, obviously not a former Astros star, but he's part of the organization. He was asked about the Astros' pursuit of Blake Snell and and what their financial situation might mean for Alex Bregman. And then he went into breaking down how the Astros make decisions and how Jim Crane comes to conclusions about what he should and shouldn't do. A surprising name 
involved in that. We'll get to that when we come back. This is the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. Welcome back to the show. Astros go down. They start a, a nice stretch when it comes to level of opponents. Good baseball teams come to town, and the Astros need to find a way to not to not get beat up at home like the, like they did in Kansas City. 
I don't know if it's the start of a re- of a reverse of what's happened what happened last year as far as how bad they were home versus how good they were away. But let's um let's hope it is because if the, if this type of run continues, they're going to be in a giant hole uh, before some of their bigger names and more talented pitchers come back. I don't know if I've ever taken a call from Irv about golf. I know he's called about it before on a, on different shows, but Irv wants to talk about golf. We'll see where this goes. What's up, Irv? You know, hey, what's up, the Borkas gentlemen? How you doing? How you doing? Uh, well, actually, I had two questions. Which you didn't answer my question yesterday, which you had it uh, saved up for yesterday. But uh, I was going to ask you, uh, I was serious about Barcelona and the Champions League. You never got to my question yesterday uh, because OJ died. So, you know, that's kind of tragic. But I also wanted to ask you about uh, Sergio Garcia and uh, and Max Homa. But now I was just gonna ask, I was just gonna say, man, you guys are like John and Lance. I don't know. One of y'all has ADD for whatever reason, and y'all start talking about something else, going to another topic, to another topic. It feels like I'm listening to the same show over and over again. What topic do we jump from that we said we were we were gonna get to that we don't normally? What's 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 the biggest thing so far? I'll take the criticism. What is it? No, I felt like, okay, so you were talking about something with Shogun yesterday. I think, was it, who called in for Shogun? Julian called in about Shogun. Shogun, okay, and then he, and then he went into something about that show, unless you're watching some other show, and then from that, you start talking about, like, then you, you're making this up. Go ahead. Okay, we bring back Throw Shape Thursday and Weekly Apologies, because now you have your own show. Can we bring it back? Well, that wasn't just a me joint. That was a Raheel joint. So, yeah, it, but you were part of it too, Dale. Sure, so kind of like a... uh, no, I understand, but it's not my bit to to take. That's a so if Raheel wanted to be a guest, a host at any point, sure, we could do it. So you want to you want to te- from City Cats? Uh, oh man, I mean, he's not on City Cats every day. He if he wants to come in, we can do all the old favorites for people, but. I feel a certain way because it ain't it wasn't mine by myself. So it's a, if the Raheel and Dell thing happened, sure we would do it. Mm-hmm. So, so talk to your boy and see if he wants to come okay. in for a, a show, and we'll do all that stuff. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, much love, man. You know, I love the show, man. Keep it up. Man. I, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate her uh, calling right. in. And now I think he his serious stuff was on Barcelona. I think uh, Barcelona won their won won the first leg against PSG in Paris three to two so they the return leg is in um is in in barcelona against psg i think barcelona advances um psg is one of those teams and now they've lost some talent because messi's gone and neymar's gone they were the team that was always supposed to be next up beyond manchester city psg has dominated the french league for a while their main goal has been champions league that was the next step in their process of asserting themselves as a, a dominant team on the world stage they just haven't been able to get it done they've been in a final and lost and th- this team ha- isn't as good as those teams i think barcelona gets gets it done they had a good first leg i think they close out psg in uh in uh in barcelona but you know camp new but you never know it's it's a champions league night weird things tend to happen um and and a night where mbappe goes crazy and takes over before he eventually joins Real Madrid as a maybe a preview for Barcelona fans could happen. But I'll take uh, I'll take PSG to uh, to advance. Is that see now I'm thinking about France. Lyon. Is that, uh, I was thinking Lyon. Take, no. Thinking about I, France. I didn't know how to spell Lyon. But Lyon, he wants to talk about Earth. What's up, Lyon? Hey, I want to throw shade at the previous caller for being soft. Also, I want to shout out to my uh, general practitioner, Dr. Khan. Uh, thank you for everything you do. Also, I want your over and under on uh, Emma, Emma Roberts being on OnlyFans. Thanks. Emma Roberts. Well, she's got. She's a famous. She's part of the famous Roberts, Eric and Julia. She's related, so I think Eric might might be her dad. I think that's a low. That's a low. Low chances for that. Ryan. I don't know. Why I have to pretend like you're Leon. Or Lyon. Uh, no, Emma Roberts, the likelihood of Emma Roberts joining the OnlyFans community in the way you'd like her to, very low. I'm going to put it at 5%. She's got too much backing from, I don't know if her 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 Aunt Julia would give her money, but she's been wor- a working actress for years now, man. She's part of the, the, I forgot the creator's name, but she's part of the American Horror, American Story. Horror Stories. Uh, universe so she'll always have as long as that thing 
keeps going, and it feels like it'll never end now. They, they're putting the Kardashians in it, at least one of them. I think Kim is in this most recent season. She'll find a way to to get work. Ryan, once again, low percentage. Emma Roberts, another blonde, although she, she fluctuates back and forth. But that's Ryan's thing, and nah, not going to happen. What was his other thing? Oh, he's going after Irv. So be it. Irv's, Irv's, Irv's one of our guys, but so is Ryan, although he likes to call under different names for, like we can't tell. if you Maybe put on a voice next time. That'd maybe that'll good. trick me. That'd be good. Or Do maybe, some accent work. Or maybe don't ask about the OnlyFans thing because that's your giveaway. I don't know if you know. Uh, it, it alerts me to who it is because you're the only one who calls about that particular topic. And that specific topic, Hollywood actresses who may have to go to OnlyFans because their careers are or in a downward spiral. And he's picking a lot of women who aren't anywhere close to having that happen. So we'll see. But he's projecting. He's like an NFL evaluator. He's not projecting it, what they are now, what they will be in the future. He's doing the way too early mock draft. Yes. This is what he's doing. Yes. <laughs> way too early. 2028 20, he's looking, only he's fans at, draft. He's, look, he's looking at sophomores in college right now and seeing where <laughs> oh, they'll well, be. Okay, college at least. Yeah. Yes. High school, that's weird. <laughs> Sophomores in college right now to see where they'll be in a couple years. But, Ryan, you got to be a better evaluator. You're like – you may be like Jeff, Jeff Bagwell when it comes to evaluating. We were going to get to that, uh, but we had a couple different callers call in. So we'll, get, we'll play that sound when we come back. Reggie Jackson was talking to John Heyman, and John Heyman asked him about the Astros' moves and – and their budget and what the, and why they spend and why they don't spend. So he had an answer that probably isn't going to make a lot of people happy because it kind of leans into what the narrative is right now. Jim Crane isn't willing to spend the big bucks despite, you know, where his actual actual yearly salary um, is as far as who he pays and how much he pays. They're up against the tax, uh, but there is a certain number that they won't go past for players and for individual players and just overall. Uh, so... Reggie Jackson talked about that, but that pro- is something you prob- probably already know about. The worst thing is the influence that is apparent when it comes to some of the ex-players that are Astro legends, and in Reggie Jackson's case, just an just a MLB legend. So we'll get to that when we come back. Uh, but first, I want to talk about my bookie. If you like the Astros tonight against the Rangers because Ronel Blanco's on the mound, Okay, you can bet on that at my bookie, and maybe you think the home trend of the Astros being bad will continue. You can bet on that as well. Just go to mybookie.ag. That's the website you can use. It'll take your viewing experience to the next level with, with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from that website. Sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. If you put in 200 you get 300 ready to play instantly using promo code BET975. And if you're still in hunt for a sports book to call home, stop looking. Just go to my bookie, bet on all the nonstop action with them. And the fun doesn't stop there. You get all you get up to the minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who to put your money on. So if you're not a person who knows a lot about sports betting, they have people there for you to help you out. And the best part about my bookie is you can bet on anything, anytime from anywhere. Doesn't have to be baseball. If you like the, the games tonight in the NBA, you can bet on that. You can bet on hockey. And as I mentioned, you can bet on Champions League when it when it comes back next week. You can use promo code BET975 to secure your welcome bonus today only with my bookie.
The Del Olalea Show continues on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's your host, Del Olalea. Welcome back in. If you want to call into the show because you have an off-topic conversation you want to get into, that's fine. We decided what Leon or Lyon or whatever Ryan wants to go by, what he's doing is he is a mid-major college football team, maybe in Conference USA, throwing out a scholarship offer to a clearly four, high four-star, high five-star recruit and saying, look, man, Look how we we recognize your talent first. We're, we're, we're going to give you a scholarship it, when you're a sophomore or a freshman in college or in high school just to let you know we see your talent and we're, we're on you first. And that's what he's doing with the only fan, uh, the Hollywood actresses who he wants to go to OnlyFans. Like he's out there first. He's just saying, look, I know it's po- it, look, I know it's not possible. It's not really possible. It's mostly improbable. But hey. If it ever happens, just know yeah. I saw it first. Speaking into existence. Yes, manifesting. He's trying to manifest the likes of Emma Roberts to OnlyFans. And and really, she's just going to make a movie, even if it's a bad movie, that pays her $2 million, and that's like going to Alabama. That's what it is. <laughs> you can just roll out of betting. Yeah, roll out of betting and get a roll. <laughs> and go to Auburn. Yes, don't worry. Which, even which is being in yeah, Madam Web. Fair, even if it's not Alabama. It could be It could be in Auburn. Yeah. Or a... Or Kentucky. I don't know. I, we're doing a new a new uh, scream scream queens. All right, so yeah, I'm yeah. good. Yeah, don't, I, I don't have to do OnlyFans for another three years. She's she's made enough contacts and she's a, a nepo baby. Where she will be fine, Ryan. You're gonna have to find a different uh, woman to manifest into OnlyFans. I did want to get to this. Been talking about it for a couple segments now. Reggie Jackson is part of the organization. Some people were saying he, and by some per- people, I mean one person, like one. Nile, who's a listener, was suggesting that Reggie Jackson was the was the person who helped Jeremy Pena get his swing back, his power back. And uh, Jeremy Pena has credited others for that, so we can push that aside. But Reggie Jackson is still part of the organization, and he was on with John Heyman, a longtime baseball writer and reporter, and was asked about some of the Astros seemingly – they're not giant limitations, but – they seem to have some limitations and, and a philosophy about who they will spend money on and how much and for how long. Here's Reggie Jackson answering some of those questions. You know, we have a, a great leadership group uh, in our with our GM. Um, also, we have a couple of other advisors in Craig Biggio and um, um, Jeff Bagwell, who are, who are very much involved in our decision making. I'm involved. Uh, Jim takes those decisions and puts them together, uh, listens to our, our management and coaching staff uh, on the field, um, talks to our GM and his staff. And then, of course, some of the analytics come into the future of a player, and our decisions are made that way, along with being fiscally responsible. Um, uh, our, our being fiscally responsible, I think, is what kicked us out of the Snell deal. Um, he signed a two-year deal, I want to say, for 62. Um, I'm, that's too much um, um, for him. He's been hurt a couple of times. Um, he, and, and I think there's incentives on top of that. He's also got an option on his own. And be, between the four or five people that make the decisions with the Astros, we don't play that game. Some of that is stuff we already know, but the introduction of Craig Biggio as another individual important in the in the decision making is is the moment I was like, oh, another another former Astro who may be more old school than new school, and is are we drifting farther and farther away, or further and further away from what got you to a point where you you are still the one of the dominant teams in all baseball, and certainly the dominant force in the AL, despite not making the World Series last year and the Rangers winning it. I don't know. I don't know if it's the Jerry Jones thing, or but we've talked about this where at some point during a run, success is being credit for the success is being doled out, and you want one. You want to be one of those people. You want to be seen as a person 
who is the reason for the success. Jim Crane is spending money. He he has been a guy who's been willing to trade to to uh, to sign the dotted line or rubber stamp a trade for a big name. He does that now. Whether he's willing to spend for guys at the top of the market, that isn't even really a question. He has not been willing to do that, particularly with baseball contracts. He's just against that. That's part of the philosophy, and it hasn't really hurt the Astros as far as an on-field product. And because of the injuries, uh, some of that stuff is coming more and more into focus. But if they're healthy, will we even be having these concerns as, as far as their pitching is concerned, at least? So I get why you might ha- hear Jim, hear that and be like, oh, Craig Bizzo's involved. Jim Crane is really involved. Why don't we entrust the general manager that you hired to be involved? And Dana Brown is certainly a part of the decision-making. But you got the three legends, the old the old guys, and, and Jim Crane as the big voices in determining what the Astros do. The Blake Snell thing, I'm not surprised by. But I would ask that if you're hiring Dana Brown to be your general manager, let him just be your general manager. Or don't hire him. Name yourself general manager so you don't have the cover of saying, well, if things go poorly, we just get rid of Dana Brown. If you're going to be that involved in decision making, and I don't and I, and I don't believe that if you're the owner, you shouldn't have no input. You should, but just be aware that you hired a particular guy to do the job and let him do it. I don't like it. I don't like it that you've got that voice. you got two voices of former Astros for whatever reason who don't really have the qualifications for it, and then you're going to insert yourself. Reggie Jackson's been around the game, but I'm not sure why he's a part of it either. And then Dana Brown sits there and goes and, prob- and probably has, uh, I don't know, does he have a 20% input? Is he the guy making the final decisions? But I think all of it suggests maybe not dysfunction, but some cloudiness when it comes to how things get done. Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, not how you would you would draw it up as far as how uh, a front office operates. You're not like, all right, so let's get two uh, team legends, Hall of Famers, get another Hall of Famer who I guess just the owner loves playing golf with or something. They've they've become friends. Cool, cool. All right. And then, yeah, our GM just kind of sits in there and takes it all in and then tries to make it work. I Somehow. Guess. Like, I, I don't even— And does he even have final say? Yeah, I, I was going to say, I don't even know if he does the negotiation parts of it. Because, I, I mean, they they signed two contracts. They signed a couple contracts uh, with, before the GM got hired in between when they won the World Series and Dana Brown got hired. And those those contracts were Rafael Montero and Jose Abreu, but working out swimmingly. Yeah, but they they still they still uh, signed those contracts. They negotiated those contracts. It's not like they need someone to then like yeah handle the handle like here's our price range. Handle it for us. It's like no, they they actually like to roll up their sleeves too and get in get into the muck of negotiation. When you go to the Wikipedia and all of the accomplishments for those. Ex players who are now a part of your organization are baseball on field accomplishments. It makes me a little uncomfortable. Craig Biggio, great player, knows a lot about baseball, but what other than being a former Astro puts him in a position where, and being maybe a possibly a friend of the owner, puts him in a position where he should be in those conversations. Jeff Bagwell, the 3, same way. Oh. 3,000 hits. Cool. It's very, it's, I think my biggest issue with it is very clickish. Uh, no pun intended. Shout out to James. Um, it's very high schoolish, almost like ah, oh, these are my boys. Uh, I, the cool kids. We're gonna go. Do, we're gonna. We're gonna do this together and run a major league baseball team. Yeah, it, it would be nice if they just mixed in a a uh, good player who wasn't like who isn't in the Hall of Fame. If they're just like, it's it's. Yeah, they're it's Reggie Jackson, it's Jeff Bagwell, Craig Biggio, and oh, it's Morgan Innsberg too. He <laughs> also has a voice in the process. Their qualifications are they're great at baseball. I, yeah. And I understand how that might mean something and, and might and might do a lot to to convince someone to put you in that position. But over the course of history, when this is the scenario, how often does it work? I'm not talking manager. Like if Biggio or Bagwell decided they wanted to be a manager, I'd be less concerned about it. You we seen that happen. On the major league level, a great player becomes a manager, or even just like whatever, a good one, a not so good one. They, they become a manager with little to no qualifications, and it works out. Uh, some of that, some of that, 
is magic. Some of it is science. Sometimes it just works. I get it. I, I don't take issue with that. But just throw them up in the front office and, ma- and have them make giant decisions about the course of your 25-man ro- your, your roster overall and go, yeah, they can do it because they are great at hitting or great at fielding. Hey, hey Reggie Jackson, should we, should we spend $90 million on Josh Hader? Yeah, yeah, we we still have Ryan Presley, Re- Reggie. Thanks for asking. No, but on top of that, should we also get uh, Josh Hader? And he's like, yeah, sure. Uh, that sounds good. Uh, yeah. He's good. Seems good. And then uh, any other pitchers you're looking to add? Nah, no, we're good. Not really. Uh, Taylor yeah. Scott, Mashinsky, uh, uh, Martinez was actually pretty good. Uh, Ooh, $90 million for one guy. Nothing for anyone else. For <laughs> the rest of the bullpen. Else? Yeah. 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 Well, you know you'll only have uh, – Three good relievers, then, and Seth Martinez. Eh. Well, it'll, it'll, deal you know, with that. And you know, baseball has gone away from pitchers going deep in the innings. We have some injury concerns. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just get Josh Hader in here, and that that'll be it. That, that you know, back in my day, Reggie. I don't know. It's not your day anymore. Whitey Ford or whoever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who was on the seventies Yankees. Same. I can't. I can't. I can't add to the bit because I don't know who's on that. Who are on those rosters either? But the. But those. Three in particular having that type of input in the twenty six on the twenty six man roster and beyond, a little concerning that we've just thrown in another ex player because, understandably, a legend and then Jim Crane as well. I don't know that Jim Crane's qualified to make those decisions. I know he's qualified to hire the right people. He's done that in the past, and I and I credit him with that. I appreciate that aspect of what he's done, but this 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 new this new I don't. It's not even a triumvirate because you got to throw in Jim Crane. That this four man room of guys who get to make decisions and Dana Brown's like, hey guys, I'm here too. <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, Mr. October, three thousand hits, five hundred home runs. I know you all want something, but I see it differently. Yeah, how loud can shut his, up? How loud can his voice really be? <laughs> yeah, shut if, up. If the owner has decided those three are going to be prominent <laughs> it's, voices, it's literally three Hall of Famers and his literal boss. Yes. <laughs> what has, is he going to do? He has to be like. Oh. He's got to fight against the tide if they all if they all think one way and he thinks another. I don't know, Blake Snell. Uh, he, we, he would help. I know we're gonna get healthy in in July and August, but uh, we kind of have to make it to July and August. Still first. be in the race <laughs> by July or August, and who knows if Dana Brown won at Blake Snell? He might have. We don't know that, but we just know that at least from Reggie Jackson that the money. And it was an issue. They needed to be physically re- physically responsible, and I understand that. I understand that part of it. I- also, if we're being honest, they hi- if they uh, brought in Blake Snell, would it be that much different? There'd be two less Ronel Blanco starts because he w- he was the fifth starter. Yeah, they would so. still be running Hunter Brown. Yeah, out there. still be Hunter like, Brown. Can- I JP can't. France. I can't guarantee that they would they would replace Hunter Brown with J- with uh, Blake Snell. It would probably be the guy who's been their best pitcher. Yeah, and, and so at that at that point, it's, I don't know. The, the, I I get why it's a, I get why the the comments made by Reggie Jackson is a big deal because it shows us a little bit piece of the decision making process. And he brought up specifically Blake Snell, who was talked about a lot, but also I don't really see it. Uh, the actual Blake Snell deal falling apart or not being able to bring him in. I'm not like. I mean, you would just like to have a a pitcher, a good pitcher. Sure. Yeah. But I I that's not what's separating this team from being four and ten and No, it's not four, four Blake it's not four ten and four. It's not three or four Blake Snells. Yeah. It's one. And he would replace Can one of them pitch the seventh inning? That'd be nice. <laughs> Can one of them get through an inning? I'd take that before before we're asking for high leverage situations. Just get me through an inning in Kansas City. That's what I'm looking for. And that's what we hope happens. Uh, as the Astros return to face the Texas Rangers. I mean, the Astros, sure, they're bad, uh, they're, but their season has plenty of games to go. The Rockets are wrapping up their year, and Ime Adoka had some things to say about his roster, and I asked a question on the rundown. Who is he specifically talking to? We can speculate considering what was said and what happened last night. We'll talk about that when we come back.
You're listening to the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. Welcome back to the show. We'll have a golf giveaway to do here in a little bit. Probably, probably do that to start the next hour. Uh, so be on the lookout for that if you're looking to go to the Chevron Championship next week. But before we get to that, let's talk about the Rockets. The Rockets lose last night in Utah. I thought they got out to a good start. And I say I thought they did because we're going to hear from Ime Adoka here in, in a bit. And he was not happy with the performance. He didn't call anyone out by name. But if you start to look at how the game went and who played and how long they played, you can start maybe to speculate and guess who these these words were directed at. He did mention Fred Van Fleet by name to speak about the opposite of his concerns. He mentioned Fred as a guy he wa- he gave an effort he wanted to see. And Fred Van Fleet was really good for the second night in a row uh, in Utah. He At least he was in Utah last night, played the Magic in their previous game, 42 points, 12 of 30 from the floor, 9 of 13 from three. He was he was on he was hot. He was on fire in that second half, particularly when they when the Jazz were uh were trying to pull away from the Rockets. You start to look at some of the other stat lines. I'm on Townsend fine, 15 and 10. You know, Cam Whitmore had a nice life. For whatever reason, he was pointing at the Utah head coach. And I don't know what that was about. Uh, some people are speculating because Utah passed on him twice in the draft that he had some for him. Will Hardy knows what he did. <laughs> Cam and Will know. That, and the, that's all that's important. Those two know what happened. Uh, Will Hardy gave him a look. After, a puzzled look. He, gave him, he just gave him a, He kind of stared at him a couple – one time because Cam hit a three uh, down on Utah end and pointed it at what appeared to be Will Hardy. And Will Hardy was just staring at him like, all right, man, um, whatever. So I don't know what that's about. Maybe maybe at some point we'll find out that they had a there was a workout that Cam did – feel went well or something but who knows but he had a nice night last night hit a, hit a couple threes but the guy in question that didn't play a lot wasn't productive and is a lightning rod for this rocket season overall was Jalen green played 19 minutes one one for seven scored three points benched a couple times did get in the fourth quarter for a possession or two but didn't play very much in the fourth quarter as the 19 minutes would, would kind of lead you to know and it was a loss to a Utah team who was sitting out plenty of their guys. Keontae George is the one regular who played. You got you had the great Johnny Jujang from from the the UCLA Bruins. He was he was big in that COVID turn COVID tournament in the Final Four. Um, lost out to Jalen Suggs in, in a great ball game. But it was a lot of guys who aren't normally playing big minutes for the Utah Jazz. And EMA spoke to that. He spoke to his team not being ready and seeing up an opponent who looked like they weren't up to their regular capabilities and the Rockets didn't show up. Guys look like they didn't want to play. Um, and consciously, subconsciously, uh, now that we're out of the race, looks like guys didn't want to play and packed it in. So when you only got one guy really show up, Fred, early, that's what it's going to be, especially at the start. What do you want the team to learn in a game like this? To not repeat history and do what we did against Memphis when they sat everybody before All-Star break and um, do what we did against Brooklyn um, and what they've done for the last few years. So um, habits are hard to break and mentalities are hard to change and that's why we are who, where we are record-wise and, um, you know, not achieving our goals. But, you know, you'd be better off saying you don't want to play and get people out there who really want to play. Strong words. He... Did the coach thing? Well, most coaches, unless you're Doc Rivers. He did the coach thing where he didn't mention any of the people he was directing his shots at by name. But looking at the game, you could you can make your assumptions. And it's unfortunate because the Rockets, as he mentioned, aren't where they want to be. Overall, when we compare them to projections and what they have been, winning 39 games is a nice step. But he said their, their goals are no longer there. Being in position to possibly make a playoff by going through the plan, out the door, uh, and they finish their, their season with three road games. Now they have to go beat the Clippers and Portland, the Portland first, on the road to be 500. The Portland game, Portland's going to be in, in a very much the same situation as Utah, uh, not playing guys who would be on their in their normal rotation to close out the year. 
can the Rockets find a way to get a win? And the Clipper game will be an interesting one because who knows where the Clippers are? Well, actually, we do know. They're stuck in the 4-5 matchup with, with the Mavs. So the Clippers very well could be sitting a lot of guys. You probably aren't going to see Kawhi or Paul George or James Harden. So there's a, there's a real chance for the Rockets to get to 41-41. and 41. But according to Ime Adoka, they've shown an inability, at least sometimes, to show up when their opponent is maybe not giving you a win, but showing you that they're not all that interested in winning the ball game by resting players. So the Rockets have to get over that. Another Bad habits. Uh, is some of that because of playing under Steven Silas, which some people will attribute a, almost all the faults of this Rockets team to? Maybe. But they've had almost a full year with Ime Adoka, and some of those ha- bad habits remain. So going forward, can, can the Rockets, with two games left, get to 500 and kind of exercise – some of the bad habits that have popped up lately. We'll see. And it would be nice to be able to say you're no longer a losing basketball team. It's only 500, but you've been a losing basketball team for far too long. And 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 if Emay's first year results in 41 and 41, then we can start to talk about, oh, we'll do this anyway. We can start to talk about what's next, what's the next step for the team. And let's hope they close it out strong. Because at this point, after the 11-game winning streak, they've now lost – Six out of seven. That's a bad way to close out the year. Let's hope they rectify that. With a couple games against teams who, particularly if the Clippers are resting people, they should beat. But you got to go out there and win them. And they didn't win the game last night. Ooh, watching Taylor and Horton Tucker try to get buckets. A little upsetting. We all remember Taylor and Horton Tucker where when Laker fans were talking about he was going to be the next great Laker. And then, then he started to play more. And, and Laker fans and the organization was like, nah, not really. I, I remember there was a trade deadline where they could have had uh, – they could have traded for uh, for Kyle Lowry when they, like, really needed a point guard. I want to say it was, like, 2021. It was the year before you went went to the Heat. Okay. Whatever with year the, that was. With the Raptors? Yeah, when he was still on the Raptors. And 2020, it, maybe. It was just going to be, like, Taylor Horton Tucker in, like, a couple seconds – and the Lakers are like, no, we can't give up Taylor Horton Tucker. No, he's going to be part of our future. <laughs> For like a chance to actually win a title. Yeah. I think it was the year after they won the title. Yeah, what like, are we talking yeah. about here? <laughs> but it was like they played, they were like in the play in, and they're like, we we cannot give up Taylor Horton Tucker. And of course, for a point, for one competent point guard. Of course, on ESPN's top 10, he, he had the top 10 play, a spin move that led to a dunk against the Rockets last night. Yeah, t- the Taylor. Horton Tucker hype was was real and overblown clearly. Post pandemic, we're all looking for something to cl- cl- uh, <laughs> clutch on to. Yeah. For some people, it's Taylor Horton Tucker. I chose Queen's Gambit. <laughs> the Lakers chose Taylor Horton Tucker <laughs> as the guy they wanted to lock into. Tiger King and Queen's Gambit yeah. were the things I I focused on. Formula One drive to survive. Yeah, Formula One. Yeah. These, sports gambling. A lot of Netflix sports gambling. Bitcoin. Looking at Korean ba- baseball <laughs> and pretending like you're going to care about it. Yeah. And then uh, once basketball came back, oh, the Taylor Lakers. The Lakers. Look how great Taylor Horton Tucker is. And now now they traded him. Uh, he's in He's in Utah now playing the, playing out the string on the, on a bad Utah team. By the way, you, you said that uh, – you know, the the comments by Ime Udoka didn't really call anyone out. He called everyone out except I, for Fred Van Fleet, if, I, if I'm going by what he said. I feel like I feel like it's pretty clear who well, it was directed at. Well, the lightning rod is Jalen Greenlee. He only played 19 minutes, went one for seven. It, it's <laughs> yeah, pretty clear he's talking about him. I, but, but he didn't specifically use his name, so I'm not gonna. I can't say he's he's talking about Jalen Green. I can I can assume if he came out and said Jalen Green gave us a absolutely great, nothing. No, if he came out and said he gave us great effort, and no, some guys came out and they weren't uh, ready to play. They overlooked the opponent. Blah 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 blah. I thought who played really well was Fred Van Vliet and Jalen Green. People would be like, no, what? what? No, this is what, no, you played him 19 minutes. He started, he played 19 minutes. That's all. In that, a close ball game. All you need to tell me. The prob- That's all you need to tell me. See, I don't know how the rest of the press conference went, but I know if it went without someone going, are you specifically talking about this player, Jalen Green? I know there's not a real one in the Rockets media because all you got to do, he set, he's, he's setting you up. And yeah. Ime is a guy who doesn't, Pull back. So if you ask him the question, maybe he becomes the coach that goes, you know what? Um, I'm not going to specifically call anyone. It was a team effort of not trying very hard. 
Uh, but or, there was one guy who who appears to have tried the least. Or you could even like ask it not in a way that's like, yeah. hey, you said people aren't trying. Are you talking about Jalen Green? Yeah. Just be like, so uh, Jalen Green only only played uh, 19 minutes. He was one for seven. Was that something in, with the matchup that you didn't like what you were seeing out there, or why why did he play? Uh, why did he play less than Cam Whitmore? Yeah. Why did you go with Whit- Why did he play ten minutes why, less than Cam Whitmore? Why did you did? go with others as opposed to as opposed to Jalen? And, and then, what, what what went into that decision? Yeah. Then he could go. Uh, didn't like the effort. Whatever. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't get a technical. So I I didn't really like how he played. Not a, no altercations. So he had to come sit by me. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't shove Taylor Horn Tucker. So. <laughs> after 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 that top ten play, he didn't was, get in Taylor <laughs> Horn Tucker's face. I was hoping Cam Whitmore would shove uh, Will Hardy. Uh. That might be a step too far. <laughs> what? No. Oh, shoving shoving no, player. No, ba- ba- see, th- back on the the basketball I grew up on, and Ime Yudoka grew up on. That, what what coach did he ever a, shove? That was a play on. That that's no tech. Ah. Uh. I Today's think, league is soft. I think even in the '90s, when Ime Odoka <laughs> was roaming roaming the court, you couldn't shove a coach without something really bad happening to you, as far as punishment is concerned. Particularly if it's the opposing coach. I mean, Latrell Sprewell co- choked his own coach, and it didn't go well for him. Go over there and shove Will Hardy and see what happens. Cam Whitmore was fine, just pointing at him after hitting a couple shots. Didn't result in the Rockets win. They lose 124 to 121. Uh, we're late for a break. We'll get to that right now. If you want to call in because I see a caller on hold, we'll get to you when we come back. We'll also do a giveaway coming up here shortly for the Chevron Championship. So stay tuned. Uh, stay locked in if you want to be a part of that. Remember to call into the show, 713 780 3776. 713 780 3776.
Welcome to hour two of the show. We will get to some comments from Cal McNair and Hannah McNair. They did a sit down with Randy McElvoy of KPRC, more commonly known as Channel 2. So we'll get to that. But first, let's talk to Dallas. He wants to talk about sports betting. What's up, Dallas? Hey, what's going on, fellas? Uh, I want to do uh, ask when I'm betting on basketball this weekend, should I shoot my shot with Dong or shoot my shot with U.S. currency? What do you think? If you missed it in the last segment of the John and Lance show, I have to add context to everything now. Uh, there was a there was a story about some a story based in Vietnam and Vietnam the currency name in Vietnam is Dong. That's what he's making. Sean, I know you're a little antsy. That's what he's referencing. Uh, I, I was I was wondering. It's like, oh, is that is that like a G League guy that just got caught up, uh, called up for the last couple games of the season? No, it is just okay. the currency for in Vietnam. And of course, because that show can't let that word go without turning it into something, it turned into like a three or four minute thing. Um, so that's what that gentleman who sounds like another Ryan. I don't, I don't know if that's a Dallas. Sounds like a Ryan to me. It's calling it about. I would say use the money of the site. If the site allows you to use Vietnamese money, go ahead. But if it's an American-based site, you probably should just use dollars. The conversion rate, uh, like $5 goes a long way in Vietnam. But I'm assuming you're going to be betting on an American site. It might not be based out of America, but they're going to be asking for dollars. So use use dollars. It would be fun, though, to bet, to bet uh, Vietnamese dongs because then – it just makes it seem like it's a higher like you're a baller. Yeah, you're like you're putting down yeah. how <laughs> yeah a million dongs, please on yeah. on on the Trailblazers. Tonight. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> like one point five million dollars equates to billions of dong. M- Vietnamese dong money money people. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I guess just calling it dong is better than calling it dongs, huh? Yeah, I dong d o n g. Don't make it a plural. I, I mean, dollar, dollars is plural. So I understand what you're saying. Pesos, but, uh, pesos. Yeah, understood. But if you Dongs. if you throw that S on the end, it opens you up for many a joke. Uh, so, yes, that's where that came from. Um, you can it, The podcast for that isn't up yet because we don't have an intern, so I'll do that after this show. Uh, but if you missed that, that Marconi level of radio, the final segment of News of the Weird, you'll be able to hear it in about probably an hour and ten minutes. But before I do that, I did want to talk about, well, we're already late for a break. I want to stay on the clock. So what we'll do is this. I mentioned a chance to win some tickets, and we've kind of been lax in doing that. Not on this show. We're professionals. But but on other shows, particularly the show that comes on before this one. So I'm going to give you a chance to win a pair of tickets to the Chevron Championship. It's the first major for the LPGA. It'll be in town. It'll be at Carlton, the Carlton woods club at the woodlands it is for next week not this weekend so you don't have to rush out or m- make a quick decision so it'll be caller let's say caller four at eleven fifteen wins a pair of tickets to the the chevron championship i i haven't been out there john's gonna we're gonna be out there doing the show um next week i haven't been out there for the tournament so it'll be my first time being out going out there John's been out there for the tournament, even when he's not working, because, you know, he's a lover of golf. He says it's a great time. So it's it's a chance to watch great players play the game of golf. And, you know, if you have a daughter and she may be interested in it, that's certainly a selling point, too. Or maybe you just maybe you have a significant other you want to take out there. Now's your chance to uh, watch championship level golf in the city of Houston at a at a nice club in the woodland. So. We're going to go, once again, caller four at 11.15 wins a pair of tickets to the first major on the LP, LPGA out in the Woodlands, the Chevron Championship. And if you don't win tickets with us, you can go to the thechevronchampship.com and, and get those tickets. I mean, don't always count on us. We will provide you with those tickets, but the thechevronchampship.com is another way for you to Go out there and see the best women in the world play golf. April 17th through the 21st. The club at Carlton Woods in the Woodlands. The club at Carlton Woods in the Woodlands is the place to be next weekend if you want to watch great, great golf. Sean, 
we have a new coach at the University of Kentucky. It's not Scott Drew. It's not Kelvin Sampson. It is one Mark Pope. Is did you oh, know? Yeah. Did you know who Mark Pope was before he became the next great Kentucky head coach? Yes, I knew. I I know him from his time with uh, fellow uh, Big Twelve member BYU. BYU. Yes, he was. Uh, he was very apologetic when BYU students wore horns down shirts uh, when Texas went there earlier this year. So I've always, I've always. He apologized <laughs> for his for his fans. Yeah, he said it's like we don't do that here. I I pretty sure I still have the audio. I can find it. Uh, but yeah, so love love the hire. Good hire, for Mark Pope. Pope. <laughs> thumbs up. You love him because of how polite, how and classy, un- he is. and understanding he is of the yeah. plight that the Texas football, basketball, and all their programs yeah. suffer through mm-hmm. because of that rudeness that they have to deal with yeah, on a consistent not, basis. He's not nasty like some of these other schools. Are. Yeah, he understands that the horns down is disrespectful. It's not what we do here, I think is what he said. There's a lot of things they don't do there. At least they don't publicly <laughs> announce that they do there. <laughs> and luckily, horns down is one of them. Yeah. Thanks, it, thanks Brigham Young. G- another thing that they don't do there, not the horns down. Well, he won't. He'll still be dealing with Texas at Kentucky, but now will he tell yes. his Kentucky fan base that you know we don't this do is that what here? We do here. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's gonna tell the Kentucky fans that they don't do that there, that they don't throw horns down. So, you th- Mark Pope thought he could escape the University of Texas? Nope. Nope. They will always be with you, and you can you can be polite to them in your new conference and in their new conference. As he he the rub for this is he returns home. He is a former University of Kentucky player. That didn't help him very much as far as the PR battle because when they went from possibly getting Dan Hurley, they never had a chance, but he was a rumored candidate to Scott Drew turning them down. Then it became, who else can we get that, at least who can we offer that won't turn us down? And they went with one of their own. So Mark Pope out out at BYU, in at Kentucky. And once again, this all comes from the fact that SMU went and got Andy Enfield from USC. And a, the dominoes started, and it wound up with BYU losing their coach to the University of Kentucky, of all places. So, uh, Mark Pope, the new head man there. We'll see what it means going forward as far as their recruiting. The thought is Arkansas will will now become a recruiting power because that's what Calipari does, and Kentucky may may take a downturn. They'll, start, they'll, they'll still get guys. Will they get the one-and-done types that Cal kind of made his reputation on? That's yet to be seen. But – uh. It's nice. It's a nice story for Mark Pope to go home, but unfortunately for him, he's got to win a fan base over. You would think they'd be all in because he won a title there, and um, and he is and he is their guy. But if if it's any indication from the initial response, they would have wanted someone else, not the big name they're looking for. Uh, maybe they think grabbing the coach from BYU is beneath the University of Kentucky. Well, not anymore. It isn't particularly when he used to play there. So, sorry about it, Kentucky. Deal, deal with it. I'm a Miami guy. Trust me. I know what it feels like to hire, to hire a guy who you don't want, who used to be one of yours, who used to play there and have had a lot of success. Doesn't guarantee anything on the coaching level, but Mark Pope is a good coach. Is he ready for, is he ready for the SEC in Kentucky? We'll see. Uh, that'll be something he'll figure out, and the Kentucky fan base will figure out really quickly because uh, they won't be patient. We'll get to our. We'll get to the next segment, excuse me, and we'll we will play that that Hannah McNair and Cal McNair sound. They sat down with Randy McAvoy. They said the, the things they've said all off season long, but now more insight on at least the McNair family and their excitement about the Stefan Diggs trade. So we'll talk about that when we come back.
Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Dell Olalea Show. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Now back to Dell Olalea. Welcome back. We've got a winner for the Chevron Championship. Tickets will be given out over the next couple of hours as well. Gallant and George, I believe, have some tickets to give away, and so do the Killer Bees. So if you were interested in going, stay tuned throughout the day. You'll have a chance to win some tickets. And like I said, if you don't win it from us, the ChevronChampionship.com is the website you can go to to get tickets uh, to the the first major on the LPGA Tour. In, in this, and it'll be in the city. It's the Woodlands, but close enough. You guys, you guys get it. You guys know what I mean. The Texans are, at this point now, with the Rocket season coming to a close, you've got the Astros struggling. The Texans are the team most people, I'd say, are. look, Astro fans are excite, excited. They are locked in. They love their team. But the team is bad right now. Doesn't mean they'll be bad in the future, but they're bad now. So all the positivity right now is about the Texans. They, they're coming off a surprisingly good year. They got the new uniforms coming. And you've got the most, are they the most beloved owners in, in the town, in the city now? It's got to be, right? No, no one's more beloved than Hannah and Cal. They're definitely, they're definitely the, the, the hot, the hotness right now. I maybe body of work people would still be Take like, well, you Jim can't. Crane. Yes, but as far as you know, snapshot polls, I think, I think they are the, the vibes are high. The vibes, the vibes are, are high. high with all things Texans. You've got a, a high, high approval rating for the Texans owners right now. Yes, yeah, shockingly. Yeah, <laughs> far too high. It's only been one year, but I'm but, just I'm, I'm just shocked. That's oh, you're high. just shocked about shocked yeah. that it's high. It's, it's, it's these guys that it's are these two, <laughs> and that guy in particular. Yeah, that that's the surprising part. Yeah, they didn't sell the team. Like, if you would have, if I would have just like been like, oh, I I was in a coma for a year. Oh, people love the Texans now. They must have sold their team to someone. <laughs> you woke up. You you woke up and said, "Hey, what's going on in the world of sports in Houston?" You're like, "Well, Texans are one of the most pop, the maybe the most popular team in the city right now." What? Yeah, if I woke up from a coma and the first thing I heard was this radio segment, I'd be like, "What? What? <laughs> the it, Texans? What the are we, Houston Texans?" You'd have to do a lot of research to catch up, and it, just Wait, watch. Cal McNair still owns the team. <laughs> just watch CJ Stroud highlights, and that'll kind of that'll kind of yeah, make yeah. you aware just of watch why. Just watch the end of the Tampa Bay game. Yeah, why things have changed in the city. So now, because of how popular they are, they're willing to sit down and do interviews with local news reporters. And they did one with Randy McElvoy of Channel 2 here in town. And he asked them, obviously, plenty of questions. But the one uh, that was a pull quote that, that they put out there was about expectations and, and the Stefan Dix trade. So here are Canna. Canna. Is that their couple name? <laughs> I meant Hannah and Cal, but Canna, I guess. Uh, here's their here are the two owners of the Texans t- discussing um, expectations and the Stefan Diggs trade. Our boys, when they heard the Stefan Diggs news, were screaming around the house, and then their friends said their teacher stopped class to tell everyone. So there's quite a buzz amongst the younger generation about the guys that we brought in. So that's, that's exciting. But, and we embrace the expectations. That's where we want to be. And at the same time, it's about building the team and the team being coached and working hard. It's the day-to-day things that are going to get us where we want to get to, but we've got to stay focused um, you know, and work hard every day to bring about where we want to go. And we want to win now. Hannah was like, I'm getting the last word on this one. We want to win now. The first couple of football in the city, what they have what they they have, am i they, wrong they literally have to be they are the first couple of football in the city and because it's like it's like one of them is a president and the other is the first what do they call it what do they what would they call first husband the first husband <laughs> I, I guess uh first lady I, it's never come up first man first because first they don't say first wife they say first lady the right first gentleman maybe? yeah maybe it's first gentleman i don't know uh, again we haven't had to we haven't had to have these discussions before yeah. and as find, a nation yeah <laughs> as a texan football nation we haven't had we haven't had, had this discussion before and it does stand out because you don't see i don't know if jeffrey was it Lori, Lori, i always get Lori and loria uh mixed, mixed up because one of them is the marlins or former marlins owner and the other is the the Eagles um, owner. I think it's Loria. We don't see we don't see him and his girlfriend or wife 
sitting down for interviews. So that's why it's always a little – it's not shocking because it's happened enough already that those two are inseparable when it comes to these things. They're always – Jeffrey Lurie is the, uh, is the Eagles uh, owner. You don't see Jeffrey Lurie and his wife or girlfriend showing up, sitting down together and having these conversations. It doesn't happen anywhere. Do you else know, but this but this city? Do you know the name of Jerry Jones's wife? Is he married? I thought he's. That, I mean, this just proves the point. I don't think he's married. <laughs> Literally, the most famous owner in in sports, and we have no idea. I know Robert Kraft has yes. a young younger girlfriend or wife, but she doesn't sit down with him when he's being interviewed. <laughs> also, I th- I think the reason we know that he has a younger or that the reason we know anything about Robert Kla- uh, Kraft's love life is a the. I don't know if you read the news a few the years ago. The four hands thing. Uh, and two, because the woman he's with is much younger than him. Like yes. that, That's the reason we know. If it was an age-appropriate woman, we would not know. Or more age-appropriate woman. It's wild that age appropri- it's not age-appropriate when she just had her 50th birthday, but he's still 30, 82. So he's 82 years old. He's 82 years old. Yeah, I don't, re- I don't remember when, I guess, he was with a more age-appropriate woman, if we're doing the judging here, when he and Myra Kraft were— we're still together. Did Myra Kraft sit down and have discussions with her husband about the Patriots on with local local news reporters? No. Does David Tepper's wife uh, sit down when they fire a coach? No. It's it's a it's an individual who does that. I, it's it's crazy because I don't I actually don't know if David Tepper is married. There's so many people. That's I, the point. And I it, just don't know. if they're We married. assume because they're older and got their money, and we just all assume they live a life where they're going to have a wife at this point. But the fact that in this city. The 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 owner's wife is a first name basis individual for all of us speaks to the rebrand and maybe the importance of having her side by side with Cal because I guess she makes more like well I don't have an one I don't have opinion on Hannah McNair one way or the other I mean she she's part she's part of the ownership group of the Houston Texans and so far in the last in the last eighteen months it's been good but it is a pretty unique situation where. She's more popular than Cal, than the, and we know her as well. Most of the owners are like, hey, this is my this is my thing. You can do something else, but not here. And credit to Cal because everything seems to be working out since she became a more prominent face for the Texans, and we'll see. We'll see what the uniforms look like. We'll see how the draft goes. But so far this offseason, I would say it's a win for the Texans. Maybe strength and defensive tackle on the draft, but other than that, eh, corner and safety, but sure. I would say overall a win for the Texans so far, and let's hope it continues. Eric, I see you. I will. I would make you wait, but we do have Michael Carroll coming up on the other side. He's he is the host of Comicast. He does that show with, or it's a podcast, but it's also a show here on the station. He does that show with Jong Lee. So we're gonna get to Eric here. He wants to talk about the Astros. What's up, Eric? Yeah, people just need to calm down with the Astros. At the beginning of the season. So settle down, muchachos. It's going to be okay. It's, it's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. And people are going to figure out T.J. Stroud and Danico Ryan in the second season. I mean, I hope they have a successful second season. But usually defenses and other teams suggest to them. And hopefully hopefully the, the new uniforms have a Oiler Blue in them. I hang up the listen. Well, Eric, you know it's going to be called H-Town Blue. Oiler Blue resides in Nashville. It, it, will have Oil, or it won't have Oiler Blue. It'll have... H Town Blue, which might be very similar, but it will have a different name, and we'll see. The report suggests that it won't be a primary color, even on a third or fourth uniform. It'd be an accent, but we'll see. Uh, we've only seen the one because it got leaked, and then Cal uh, did us all a service by showing an official picture with Tank and Nico Collins. He mentions the Astros turning it around. Well, they can't have pitching performances like they did last night or yesterday afternoon. Hunter Brown, he, it was historic in all the bad ways. First pitcher in MLB history to allow 11 hits while pitching less than one full inning. Not great. They have the Rangers tonight, Ronel Blanco on the mound, which has meant success and dominance. We just have to hope that continues because it's now three in a row. And losing a fourth, <laughs> it'll just make people more and more antsy. As, like Eric said, it's early, but you keep dropping games and people start to call for people to lose their jobs it's already happening some somewhat in a joking fashion but there is a little bit of seriousness behind it because we're not used to this and you see all the 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 comparisons they go the last time the astros were this record it was 
this season, an awful season. A year they won 55 games. Yeah, well, <laughs> back in the real dark ages. So that's where we're at right now. And Eric, apparently the the guy who's going to bring calm and tell everyone to relax and then also tell us how the, how the Texans aren't going to be any, any good next year. He's a Cowboy fan. That's what that's about. He probably has no place in this discussion because win a playoff game for your Cowboys. They do win a lot of regular season games. Don't win any playoff games. Um, not in the Mike McCarthy era. I think they're like one in three or something like that right now under him. We'll have Michael Carroll on the other side. We'll talk movies. We'll talk TV. I watched a great episode of X-Men 97. I watched Shogun. I was, I was thir- my nerd, my nerd, my, 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 I'm, my nerd history, not my nerd history, but my my nerd cup was full. I watched a lot of I watched a lot of nerd culture things this week. I watched Fallout. That's out on Amazon Prime. I didn't play the video games, but I'm, now I'm watching TV show. Shout out to Ella Purnell. Uh, she's the star of of Fallout. So my nerd cup is pretty full. Michael Carroll may may help me add to it this weekend when when we come back.
Some guy is in the room with me. Michael Carroll joins us, the co-host of Comic Cast. You can find that on Spotify or Apple, the podcast, or if you're driving out and about or just at home tonight, you can listen to it. Uh, he and Zhang Lee do that. Zhang Lee do that. Uh, nine to ten tonight. It moves around, but I'm going to let does you know move around, yes. anytime uh, Comic Cast is on, and tonight it's on from 9 to 10, so you can listen to that if, if you just want to hear the latest and best when it comes to uh, pop culture. So you are going to give people a non-spoiler review of Monkey Man. Mm -hmm. You're going to talk mm -hmm. about the Invincible finale. Mm -hmm. You also have got X-Men 97, which mm -hmm. I watch. I think it's maybe one of the best cartoon episodes Maybe even just a television, but some animated say, television yeah, I've yeah. seen in a very, very long time. So yeah. I won't spoil it, but uh, it was phenomenal. Uh, mm -hmm. And obviously, X Men are always messy when it comes to the relationship stuff, and yeah. if that continues. It's very much a soap opera type deal. Very uh, much. So. But but the narrative that that has been pushed as far as the storyline was great too. Outside of the outside of the uh, the, the relationship stuff, so. Watch that. It's on Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, X Men ninety seven, a great episode. It was really, really good. And then Shogun, of course, is something that uh, you will review as well. So those are things on Comic Cast for this week. Uh, if you want an expert expert's opinions on those particular subjects, but something for us to watch beyond those, Michael. Do you have something? Uh, this weekend, I am going to go check out Civil War, okay. the new Alex, Alex Garland movie. I, I almost caught it yesterday, but I didn't have time. Um, but I am very curious about this one. It is obviously the the setup is that it's a future where America is at war with itself, hence civil war. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, it, but I think some of the things that people may be like, oh, I don't know. Like it is, I think, more focused on the war journal journalism aspect of it, because I, from what I've read and what I've understood is that it's. You don't really understand why we're at we're in that point. I think it's more of the what if we had a war here? How would war journalism play out here in America during a situation like this? So you think it's less about the divides and the country leading to it, and more about yeah. how we would cover? Because from my understanding, they don't express how like like in the trailer. One of the big things is Texas and California are together. And that in would, what universe is that the, even possible? Not in this universe. Not in this universe, for sure. No. So what we don't, I don't, from my understanding, we don't really understand why that is or why they were pushed to that point. Okay. Um. So, so it's more focused on, I believe it's uh, Kristen Dunst, Kirsten Dunst, and uh, I forget the, the male actor's name, but it's more focused on their journey covering this war than, than necessarily the politics behind it. And, whether that's a bad thing or a good thing, I mean, uh, yet to see, but it's still an interesting concept, to say the least. So a couple of the actors he mentioned, Kirsten Dunst in, in the movie, the guy who played Pablo Escobar from the yes. Netflix series in it, Wagner Mora, I hope that's how I say his last name, Jesse Plemons, who is married to Kirsten Dunst in real life. You've got uh, the the actress who played Priscilla in the recent Priscilla movie about mm -hmm. about. Priscilla Presley, and also Nick Offerman is in it as well. So you got names that you'll recognize and faces you'll certainly recognize in Civil War. And as Michael mentioned, it's out. You could have obviously watched it yesterday. You can watch it. You can watch it today if you want. Um, I'm I'm interested in that because I like Alex Garland movies. Yeah. He is um, Annihil he's the guy behind Annihilation among others. Yes. So if you, if you I don't know if it'll be as trippy as Annihilation was. <laughs> right. It seems unlikely. I, yeah, I don't I don't think so. And it, it's also like his uh, the last one I think was Men. Yes, and that one was which is trippy too. I yeah. saw it too. It's a little, it's, it's off putting. Yeah, um, yeah. But this one, like, it, I think it has, I think it has a more broad appeal. Uh, I mean, I mean, unless you want to kind of stay out of that content matter, sure. It has a, I think, a much broader appeal than something like Men or Annihilation, which are very.